aware of. If Wyatt's ready, we could do some chatting. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Can hear you awesome. great. Awesome. So, th thank you so much, first of all, for coming by the stream. This is really cool. I, I think I can speak for everyone in saying that we really appreciate this. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I, I can't believe how much you must keep track of with the, the chat going on and the game itself going on and you're talking. That's some, that's some crazy multitasking you do every day. Yeah, it gets a little bit easier. But viewers could tell you that sometimes I... It's not uncommon for me to, to miss stuff. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for the warm welcome. Yeah. So I've had the pleasure User of meeting I've had the pleasure of meeting Wyatt a few times in the past and I can tell you he's an awesome guy. One of the nicest guys you'll meet. Really down to earth too. So um yeah, I'm really excited to have him here. Cheater. <laughs> um Yeah, so uh, all kinds of stuff we could talk about. Uh, if you don't mind, I can start off with a question. Yes, that's that sounds good to me. User left your channel. User joined your channel. Okay. Um. <laughs> sorry. User was moved out of your uh, channel. Um. So you're in a competition too. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to. Multitasking is yeah. hard. Okay, so I know you probably won't be able to answer this question directly, but I'll just go ahead and ask um, the question I would most like the answer to, and then maybe you can tell us as much as you can. Um, what are the chances of us seeing a self-found mode sometime in the future? Oh, that's that's totally that's a that's a totally fair and good question. Um, I am uh, playing uh, self-found hardcore myself right now. Nice. Um, I actually I think I'm gonna take uh, a short break from it to to level Paragon some more this week. Huh. But. Uh, I think the trick for us is um, we think it's a fun way to play for some people, but not everyone likes playing that way. Um, so I think, you know, obviously people can play self-found kind of right now. I think the main challenge is, is it'd be nice to have a little bit of recognition for it. Um, you know, just some sort of indication that this validation, right, from the server that your character is self-found. Yeah. But we also don't want to do it in a way that you know complicates the UI. And, and I know that the, our solution to this in the past has always been a little bit inelegant when we introduce things like you know people complain a lot about elective mode, that's a big one, or advanced tool tips, and then most recently monster power. And we've sort of used options as a little bit of a crutch to hide things from beginners while still allowing expert players access to these things that we really want. And, um, you know, we're like, well, on the character creation screen, do we want to really put another self-found checkbox, you know, on the front? And we're like, well, you know, it, it, I mean, I, I guess maybe, but, oh, uh, can I turn it up? Oh, am I, is, I can turn, yeah, I can turn Wyatt up if he's too quiet. Oh, you can do it? Okay. Yeah, I can just change it for me. So it's it's definitely oh wait I'm gonna cause you to lo lose out on no it's totally fine leveling time. We, got, we got six hours a few seconds won't matter too much I usually die around level twenty anyways <laughs> yeah is, is that better I think I think your volume should be good now all right here's here's a little testing I hope that's better um you know I'll make a long story short because I feel like I'm rambling no. uh, I think cell phone is pretty cool but we don't want it to. Um, get in the way of people who aren't interested in it so we have been talking and again like I know we use non-committal language a lot <laughs> and you know um, we, we do that because at, at the end of the day design's super iterative so it is a matter of like trying some stuff out and we like some stuff and we don't like others and you know we hate promising things only to try it internally and realize we're not happy with it so again you know lots of non-committal disclaimers um, we've talked about maybe marking your character automatically as having been self-found until you trade. Mm. So the moment you you know equip something that you didn't find yourself, maybe if I just pull up your um, Battle.net uh, page, then then on the web page it says this character has used the auction house or hasn't used the auction house. 
Um, so that's definitely kind of a soft way to maybe do something like that. Uh, the other challenge for me is um, when I play self found is my gold. I, I hate having to like what you were doing just now, right? With the competition is like, remember how much gold you have. Don't go below <laughs> the amount that you started at. That's kind of annoying. It'd be nice if the game just kind of said, hey, this is how much gold this character has. And then if I wanted, I could opt in to having, you know, shared gold with the rest of my account, which honestly, like I consider that great that my gold is shared across the account most of the time. It saves me from having to transfer gold between all my characters, which is why we did it. Yeah. But uh, definitely does make self-found a little bit of a pain. So maybe like a little option or, or something. Like, like I said, I'm not a big fan of options. I think it complicates <laughs> the UI. But um, I don't know. I like self-found. So if we can do something to help support, support and promote it, that'd be great. Yeah. Maybe along the same line, is a would a self-found ladder ever be an option? Ooh. Uh, maybe. Again, non-committal. Yeah. <laughs> I, think that'd be, I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, uh, that's definitely come up, uh, I, but more than that, unfortunately, I can't really say. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm sure a, a lot of people in chat will have things they want to talk about, but I could keep, I'm sure I could keep asking questions all day too. Um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about, uh, a day in the life of a developer. S something I've always been curious about. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I usually start my day um, checking email, uh, forums, Reddit, and see what people have been talking about. Um, also, internally, there's there's development that's going on. So, uh, and then I, I go over my my meeting schedule for the day and prioritize what I really want to get done. Um, I got frustrated at various points where sometimes I'd end the day and. There's a lot of design discussions, but design discussions don't always feel concrete. So I really like to get something, you know, tangible done. So I like to set mini goals for myself uh, every day. So at the start of the day, I like to set a goal and say, you know, by the end of the day, if nothing else, I will at least get, you know, a demon hunter skill change done or something like that, um, or a work on the itemization or whatever. Uh, uh. And, and then uh, and. Sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. Um, day is split. Um, usually there's, uh, on Mondays, um, the whole team gets together um, every Monday morning and we do updates. So if there's new people on the team, they get introduced. Um, we'll get, that's an opportunity for the whole team to stay in sync about, about what's going on in the land of Diablo. Um, and then uh, Tuesdays is actually really exciting. Uh, Tuesdays around here is no meetings Tuesday. What we found <laughs> is that if you could have you know an, un an uninterrupted block of time, that's when people get most of their work done. And so that that's really nice. That makes sense. So do you and, do you do much of the actual programming? Um, we do uh, a scripting. All of our powers are. Um, scripted internally um, as along with uh, a power editor that our gameplay programmers have provided. So uh, our gameplay programmers created a pretty powerful set of tools for us to um, script and code um, the powers. Okay. And we work in conjunction with our tech art department to actually create all of the skills. Um, tech art for us takes a much larger role in our skill development than um, some other games because we feel that the connection between the mechanics of the skill and the visual of the skill is premium for us. So we really want to involve art very early and throughout the entire skill development process. Makes sense. Um, how oh, is... Lilira is here. Oh, really? Yeah, she's calling me out. People, people, people <laughs> schedule meetings on No Meeting Tuesday. It's that's true. <laughs> it's it's pretty funny. We're not supposed to, but then you have like this really important meeting, like say, you know, I don't know. Just sometimes things are really important, time sensitive, and they're like, oh, look at all this free time everybody has on Tuesday. I'll, I'll <laughs> schedule a meeting then. That makes sense. So I'm getting some questions from uh, chat, and and uh, maybe I'll change them a little bit but still try to get people's questions um 
what are you, are you most excited about with Diablo 3 right now? Like, uh, what that you guys are working on or, or talking about has you most interested? Um, so this is a total tease, but, but, but the item stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, Travis is uh, running point on that. And um, we have conversations about it uh, pretty regularly. And we also consult, you know, we're just talking to people on other teams all the time. Um, we talk to people who are playing, you know, Diablo all through the company. We talk to people on the Diablo 3 team. We talk to people not on the Diablo 3 team. Um, it's just, you know, there's so many awesome designers at Blizzard. So we are constantly like running our plans and ideas past other people to say, hey, is this good? Is this good? No, that's not good. What would you change? And trying to, you know, get it all together. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I'm also pretty excited um, about, yeah, just other plans for the future. Um, the multiplayer improvements was actually consumed uh, a lot of my time over the last uh, couple months. And I think we can go farther. Um, I think, I don't know, have you had a chance to play much multiplayer um, since the patch? Yeah, um, I'll be completely honest, this wasn't the patch I was most excited for, but once we started playing it, I realized how much more awesome multiplayer is now. It's it's almost completely seamless. They don't, don't feel a need to have people on TeamSpeak when we're playing. Um, yeah, like, all those little changes really added up to make a big difference, I felt. Yeah, uh, like, I. so this week... Um, uh, I got this idea from um, our lead gameplay programmer who's, who is telling me this is what he does, is he logs in and he picks the monster power he wants to play on and does any quest, any act, and then just hits the public game button and just drops into any public game at any quest, any act, and it's almost like the game just kind of rolls something for you, and it's pretty fun. Yeah, that makes just, sense. You know, play with random new people. I'll have to try that because I haven't played a public game in probably six months just because I'm always streaming when I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, for anyone who's um, just getting here, we have Wyatt Chang, developer of Diablo 3 on TeamSpeak, chatting with us about the game. Ah, hey everybody who's who's just tuning in. I'm, I'm glad yeah, the monster density was a big change too. I was just looking at Viper's comment. It's kind of the combination of multiplayer and monster density allows me to do public game, any quest, any act. And kind of like, yeah, some areas are still not as good as others. And, and that, you know, we can work on that a little bit too. But the, the main point is that it's not horrible, you know? You kind of, you get to play with new people. People run all sorts of different skills too. Um, I do see a lot of Ar Archon wizards. That's pretty fun. <laughs> whirlwind barbs but a lot of demon hunters using rapid fire and stuff it's fun to just kind of be in there yeah um of the classes what class do you feel I'm trying to decide how best word this um what class do you feel needs the most changes right now um I'm going to. It's interesting. That I like the way you worded that question. It's like, which which class is the worst? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll read between the lines. It's okay. Fine. Um, so so realistically, we we um we have been looking at our classes across the board. I know, for example, like without actually, you know, again, I don't I don't want to promise anything, but. Um, Maybe to summarize um, what I commonly see uh, from the community, obviously there's concerns about Demon Hunter DPS. Um, it's most recently been, it's been fashionable to say effective DPS to sort of highlight that my character sheet might say one thing, but the amount of damage I actually do is different. Um, and I, I definitely think that there's, there's some stuff going on there. Um, Demon Hunters are, you know, ranged classes who um, sometimes they have to either kite more um, or uh, you know like like you kind of figure if I'm playing a ranged you know class I want to be able to sit there and pew pew and, and do a lot of damage and uh, it can be frustrating if you know I think the classic video is is a monk wearing almost identical gear and I'll caveat by saying obviously there's lots of 
differences in like builds and gear, but underlying all of it is some changes I think we should really take a hard look at at classes in general. And we started doing this um, quite a while ago, actually. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. And yeah. I'm rambling, and I think I realize it's hard to stream because I'm trying to read the comments that go by. <laughs> and people are like asking about Endless Dungeon and, and who's Wyatt and all this other stuff. <laughs> and I'm trying to like formulate this thought, and I realize I'm just rambling. So let me, let me, let me get to the point. <laughs> yeah, you just, sometimes it helps just to look away from chat for a while and then come back yeah, to it. Yeah, my apologies. I'm not <laughs> ignoring chat. I'm going to stop looking at chat. I'm going to take, I'm going to take Archon's advice and just answer the question. <laughs> So the game shipped a certain way, and uh, we have some spreadsheets internally that we use to tune the classes. And we'll, like, we have some general philosophies. Like, if I spend a skill, which, um, let's say, I'm just going to use some hard numbers, okay? Because I, I work in numbers all the time. Okay. If I activate a skill that costs no resource, or maybe it generates a resource, um, like, like your standard Magic Missile or Fist of Thunder or Deadly Reach, we kind of say, hey, you know, ballpark that's going to do about 150% weapon damage. Um, sometimes it's a little bit higher, sometimes it's a little bit lower. For example, if it's AoE, you're going to do a little bit less. If it's um, generating a lot of resource for you, it's going to do a little bit less. If it's not generating a lot, it's going to maybe do a little bit more. But, you know, anywhere from, like, I think, like, if it's cleave, or um, if you look at uh, a skill that hits a lot of targets, like, say, bola shot, then, you know, again, it's going to be lower. And that kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, and then if you spend a lot of resource, um, say, Cluster Arrow um, or Hammer of the Ancients, then you're going to do more damage. And we have some multipliers that we use internally to say, hey, a Point of Fury is worth about this amount of time. So we kind of have this, you know, model that we use internally. And, and we're allowed to deviate from the model, but it's always good to have this, like, mathematical basis for roughly what things should be. We say if it's a dot, it does this much. If it's a channel, it does this much. If it costs a lot of resource, if it's hard to execute, you know, if it can hit five targets, but it's actually hard to hit five targets, then that's going to do more damage than a skill that hits five targets, but it's easy to hit five targets. I hope mm. all of that makes sense so far. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So what we realized is um, we did a bunch of tuning and we have this model and then when the game went live we start looking at the classes and people would say hey you know on the barbarian as an example rend is not really worth using and so rend had gotten buffed fairly early on another one was hey hydra other than venom hydra is not really worth using and so we buffed all the other runes on hydra and i don't know if you guys remember this from like 102 103 yeah um, but there were a lot of big another good example is like a seven-sided strike um was much lower um back in the day i think it was around a thousand percent weapon damage and now it's much higher um and so um when we shipped, a lot of our skills were um, very close to this internal mathematical model that we had. And of course, there was room for interpretation and stuff, and that's fine. Um, and then post-ship, um, a lot of the skill changes that we've made have been based more on the realities of actually playing. And um, we'll say, hey, you know, Ren's not worth using compared to XYZ, or Hydra's not worth using compared to these other things, and so on and so forth. And so we gave out these buffs, and those buffs are not based on the model anymore, they're based on what are the player's other options. And so the skills start to become balanced much more against each other than they do against this model. Yeah. Okay, so, bring the story forward to today, I think what we need to do is, kind of in this process, there's a lot of skills that can get overlooked. And um, I'll use Impale on the Demon Hunter as an example. Okay. Um, and it's like, wow, Impale's really not doing its job, I think. You know, it's a single target damage skill that spends a bunch of hatred, but I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to use versus Hungering Arrow. So what we need to do is, is kind of take all the lessons that we've learned about how much does it actually, is it actually worth to spend a resource? How much is it, how much is a cooldown worth? What's the value of a skill slot? 
you know, um, what is the value of having to switch between two? And we've kind of accumulated a lot of lessons and we need to revisit the model and revisit all of our skills across the board and say, hey, having learned everything that we've learned over the last year, um, how can we incorporate this to basically just give a lot of attention to all the skills that have sort of not gotten a lot of attention over time? Makes sense. So when you're comparing potential builds to like Whirlwind or Crit Mass or Archon or Zero Cooldown Zombie Dogs, it seems like some of those builds maybe weren't intended in the original design, but players kind of found ways. I always call them like exploity builds. I know it's not a real exploit, but it feels borderline exploit. Do you... Do you guys consider getting rid of those builds to balance the other ones, or, or, or talk about just just making it so there's multiple builds that are also that powerful? Uh, I think Diablo plays best. Um, so this is kind of high level ph philosophy. Diablo plays best when the game is moderately challenging. Um, I shouldn't. Nah, I'm I'm gonna get called out on that statement. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me put that a different way. Uh, Diablo isn't great when it's super easy. Um, for some people, it's not great when it's punishingly hard. I know some people love the punishingly hard as well. And, um, certainly there's ways um, to play it that way. But, but a lot of times, I kind of like it when um, you know players will say, Hey, I really like putting on some music and you know maybe streaming, put on a stream. And, and play and it's very relaxing um, and you want to kind of be in that zone there's this zone in between frustratingly challenging and you know too easy uh, a flow state um, and um, we want to try and have people in that flow state so how does this relate to skills um, some skills uh, like our, our job is skills and monsters play off of each other you know the two um, I use this phrase a lot, are two sides of the same coin, is how powerful is the player and how powerful are the monsters. Um, so if we have ways to provide some moderate challenge at all times, then that's okay. And we want the player to feel super powerful sometimes, but that does mean that the monsters every so often should also be commensurately powerful so that you still you know, have to pay attention and can't just you know, close your eyes and, you know, hold down one button the whole game. Yeah. So, and and maybe I'm pushing you into something you can't talk about. It, do you lean more towards buffing other builds to the level of those builds or, or more, I guess, re reducing the, uh, the effectiveness of these more explodey type builds like Whirlwind and Crit Mass? That, um, I don't actually know yet. Um, that is um, actually a place I think, I'll use a zero cooldown zombie dogs. That was one of the examples that you brought up earlier. Um, is I like that uh, some legendary items are involved in making that, like say kaleidoscope. Mm. Or I'm not, not always, but often yeah. involved in that. Um, and that's actually really something I think that is underutilized in Diablo 3 right now. And, and we've hinted at this before, is, is we'd really like legendaries to not just be stat sticks, but to open up new build possibilities. And um, that, that's something we're, we're definitely looking at is, um, obviously build at diversity has always been something that we've talked about. And um, people could argue about whether we've been successful or not. I think a lot of people would say we're not. I think some people would say, oh, it's okay. But I think one thing we can all agree on is there's a lot of room for improvement. And one area for a lot of improvement is to say, hey, here's a legendary item that opens up a whole new build for you. Um, I think that that's really the kind of thing I want to see a lot more of. That sounds really cool. So, so maybe it's okay that some builds are more powerful if they're hard to get the gear for? Yeah, um, I think kind of, um, I mean, Travis hinted at some, like, for example, was his example, like, uh, if you could have two Hydras out, 
Like that's that's kind of neat, right? Someone might make a whole build around that, um, and so so that has potential. I think one that didn't really hit a good. Oh, uh, I think uh, was a the. Inna's four piece makes my sweeping wind super cheap. Um, that's one that is like a, a pale shadow of what it could be in terms of opening up build possibilities. But it definitely says, hey, we're going to play around with sweeping wind. And it does so in this sort of like quality of life way more than an interesting build decision way. Mm. So if we could take that idea and just dial it up to 11, then that's that's kind of where I'd love to, to be. Makes sense. So, um, so I'll change the topic if, if we're done with that. Um, we've been talking about classes that we'd like to see in the expansion and, and trying to just speculate maybe what classes could be come out be coming out um, i know you oh, can't you tell totally us speculate, but I'm totally not talk <laughs> yeah yeah no, I, I know you can never tell us what classes would be coming out um but i guess i mean yeah i guess it wouldn't mean too much to the conversation but uh we were trying to find which diablo 2 class would make a best transition into diablo 3 and decided the druid would be the one that would make sense because we don't really have a shapeshifter yet um but yeah i know you can't talk specifically on which classes will come out in the expansion of course but uh, what's uh? Can you give us a little bit of your of your thinking as to as 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 you design classes for the for the expansion? How that process goes? Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm walking too close to the line. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Don't feel pressured to answer anything. I am trying to think about what I what I can say. Um, you know, I, I, I really, I, I don't think um, I want to say anything specific. Um, what I will say is that from a development standpoint, we definitely want to do something that our um, artists are excited about. That's always a really strong standing point. Um, I think one of the qualities that makes Diablo special is um, a lot of the aesthetic to the game. Um, it's very satisfying to, to, to slay monsters. And if you look at the lineup of characters, um, they you know they look good up there. There's a lot of different archetypes represented. So um, having something where it just kind of vibes well on that lineup, and the artists are excited and they say, "Yeah, this is this is this is cool." Um, that's really important. Um, and then I would look at you know play style. So for example, um, see, I don't want to say too much. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> but, but, Somebody who, who doesn't overlap existing play styles as much and is more different would be more desirable. That makes sense. You don't want two classes to feel too similar to each other. Um, yeah, right. Like, if, if I can already get a similar gameplay experience out of um, the existing Diablo 3, that's you know that's, that's not as interesting. And so we're, you're, you're kind of um, contrasting you know, conflicting needs uh, well, not conflicting. Sorry, they're not conflicting at all. There are multiple needs, and we have to find the overlap of you know great artistic and aesthetic vibe, good you know story and world integration opportunity, good uh, mechanical gameplay uh, differences from the existing five classes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> what about? I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. Um. Yeah, I'm reading over uh, an email that you um, shot me earlier. Okay. Oh, yeah. Design philosophy and how we make decisions. Yeah, <laughs> I think we talked about everything that was in your email. Yeah, probably. Um, I, I think it was Travis that had mentioned recently the idea of endless dungeons or some kind of endgame content that was uh, separate from the, the four acts that are in the game. Can you talk at all about your, yeah, your just your philosophy on on endgame content like that? Uh, yeah, um, I think when I when I look at endgame du uh, dungeons or people suggest it, my my very first question is, what um, 
what motivates people, I was, I'd be like, why do you want that? And I don't mean why do you want that in a case like you don't want it. Like I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm trying to say what is the the desire, the root desire and motivation, so that we can best address it. Because there's actually a lot of different ways to implement something like that, and so. As designers, we really want to make sure we are satisfying that need. So, like when I ask people that, I get different answers. Like, for example, someone will say, I, um, I really want to test my character, and an endless dungeon that's continuously getting harder allows me to find out how far my character can go. Um, other people will say, I want to play for, you know, hours on end and not have to, you know, and like I said, I have this flow state that I'm in and I just like the idea of an endless dungeon that allows me to continuously go through and not have to worry about, you know, my flow state being interrupted. Um, yeah, you know, varied gameplay where you, you kind of, you have this intuitive sense that you want your gameplay to vary, um, uh, and so, like like in Diablo 2, people would do runs, and there's a sense, well, runs are very rewarding, but it'd be really nice if if the game changed for me. And and some of the appeal for some people of an endless dungeon is this idea that, that I can sit down and the game is presenting me with different content, different art, you know, different environments, different monsters, and it's almost like I'm on a on a tour bus, right? And I'm gonna kill everything that we pass by. Yeah. Um, and so these are the kind of conversations that we have. Um, you know, I accidentally hit my back button on my browser and now chat's not loading for me. Uh, sometimes it takes a while to load. Um, you can try to pop out chat, like in the bottom right there's a gear symbol and you can hit pop out chat, sometimes that'll load. I am in over my head right now. I need to get away from these monsters. <laughs> this guy is too fast. Is that a fast, rare, and buried pack? It might be. Uh, no nightmarish. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, yes. I think I might have just got a really lucky dodge right there. I totally forgot to buy potions. Yeah, we're doing a uh, self-found hardcore leveling competition right now. And maybe someone could link the list of other people doing it in case people want to check those out. Hey, uh, uh, just as an FYI, um, Travis just popped his head in the door, and he's going to take my place at um, 11 o'clock Pacific. Oh, great. Maybe we could ask him a few itemization questions. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that, that, I'm sure that will work. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I had something. Uh, but to wrap up yeah, the endless ahead. dungeon, like I, I, I think that there's definitely a desire there, um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, we 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 talk about about doing something to try and fulfill the those different kind of desires that people have. Yeah. Um, it seems. And correct me if I'm wrong here. It seems that recently you guys maybe have put some focus on getting people to rely on the auction house less. Would that be a correct assumption? Uh, or you mean like uh, with the um, demonic essences? Demonic essences, yeah. And I think there was there was a blue post about. Um, whether or not you guys would introduce an app that people could go to the auction house online or through their phone. And I'm paraphrasing, so I could be wrong here, but I think the response was somewhere along the lines of, we don't want to encourage people to use the auction house right now. We, we don't want people to be uh, relying on it for to get all their gear. Right. Um, I think when we talk about uh, auction house... Um, there's definitely a lot of um, difficulty for people sometimes to get a particular item that they really want. And, you know, the loot in Diablo is random. So if I want a particular item and it just doesn't drop for me, you know, that's definitely when in Diablo 2 people would go to trade or trade chat or, or um, trade sites. 
and we wanted to make sure we could provide um, a better experience than hanging out in a trade channel. And that's where the auction house comes in. What, what I don't like um, is when people um, have all 13 of their item slots filled with items from the auction house and none of them are things that they feel like they've found or made themselves. So those crafting recipes were um, sort of a step in that direction to say, hey, four of your items or five or two or whatever number, depending on your specific gear loadout, are going to be things that you really feel like you found yourself and you didn't get it on the auction house. Um, but other items, you know, you got from the auction house. And so sort of asking ourselves this question of like, what's the right number of items that I should feel like I earned myself versus, you know, found via auction house or trading or other mechanisms. Um, is it, you know, if you're playing self-found, that, that number is zero. Yeah. <laughs> if you're currently playing live and you're not crafting, then that answer is every slot comes from the auction house. And, um, you know, I, I feel like there's a number in between. Um, and that number at launch was definitely too high. And it feels like a number closer to three or so. Um, I'm just, that's just gut. I mean, I don't have like scientific data to back this up, but if three of my items came from the auction house and the rest of my items I had made or found myself, then I, you know, I'd feel like that was a good balance. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen much of chat. I haven't been able to pay attention to it a ton. Um, but yeah, if you guys have things you'd like to hear about, feel free to type them. Not that they'll necessarily be addressed, but um, yeah, definitely interested in what you guys are most excited about. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking over did the you, email um, you sent me. Uh, you had mentioned uh, ladders earlier. Did you uh, take part in D2 ladder and there's like a ladder reset and stuff? I, I didn't. I didn't play D2 nearly as seriously as I played D3. I played it much more casually. Um, but yeah, I guess where I'm at now, where I play D3, you know, probably six hours a day on average, um, it's something that would really interest interest me. But I understand that you also have to deal with the issue of splitting the community and making it a little bit more overwhelming for new players. So I, I guess I'm my selfish desire is that a ladder is added. Um, <laughs> But thinking as a dev, I understand why it's not that simple. So there's there's two aspects of ladder, um, both of which I think are interesting. Um, one is the competitive uh, ladder aspect. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but notice that there's someone in your chat channel. I finally got chat working again, named <laughs> Netrunner, and I just that just caught my eye because I've been playing a ton of Netrunner lately. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard of that. Um, anyway, ladder. Um, so the two reasons people play ladder. Um, one is uh, the competitive race to the top. Um, the other is the economy reset. Sort of this like, you know, fresh sharded off economy where everyone, you know, begins clean. And as you've probably found with all your self-found hardcore playing, um, it's really fun to level up new characters. Um, and that, that experience, like, what happens typically with characters is my character is growing ever more popular, well, I'm powerful, um, not popular, powerful, um, but the frequency of my upgrades is getting farther and farther apart. So, um, often what I'll say is, like, when I level from 1 to 60, I find an upgrade for my character every 15 to 20 minutes. And particularly if you, you know, play self-found, I'm, I'm sure you've experienced that. Like, every 15 to 20 minutes, maybe I'll, I'll replace a glove or a shoulder or a belt. And, and that's pretty cool. And then when you hit level 60, if uh, if you're still you know self-found, then you're finding an upgrade maybe every 45 minutes or an hour. And that rate of upgrade gets slower and slower with time as your gear continues to improve and get better and better. Um, and then you use the auction house, and um, you know you hurdle yourself forward, and you go from getting an upgrade every hour to now, you know, if you were to continue to farm, you get an upgrade every five hours or ten hours or, or even farther. Um, so I think the, 
the one of the benefits of a of a ladder is just this idea that it's really fun to start fresh and experience this rapid rate of upgrading again. Um, and a ladder is a great excuse to to do it. Yeah. Sometimes, like we all want to do it, and we can choose to do it. But sometimes it's nice to like do it together as a global community, or you know, have a, a recognized badge of honor for having done it. Yeah. So I I assume it's something that you you'd be excited about, but but something that also is a little loaded. Uh, we're, um, I mean, we're definitely looking into the possibility of, of a ladder or something like that. Um, I, I, I personally, this is just, you know, me speaking and, and there's other people on the team who would disagree with me. So I'll say that, like, you're just really hearing the opinion of one person. I'm more excited about the re-roll and clean economy aspect of, of ladder seasons than I am of of the race you know I, I know the race is exciting too um, and there's pictures of people who are getting ready for the new season uh, and they have like all their caffeinated drinks on their on their desk and, and I think that's epic and awesome but uh, you know not always healthy right um, <laughs> yeah. no caffeine for but, me today but, <laughs> but, but realistically yeah it's, it, it's something that would cool but it, it wouldn't be viable until until an expansion. That makes sense. Um, I, I saw, um, so I did glance over at chat, um, and I saw someone mention white items. And if you don't mind, I'd, I'd love to just insert a side comment on white items. Yeah. Um, I don't like white items in the game the way they are now. And I know that there's a really popular request to hide white items and blue items even. Um, and I think that that's um, a totally understandable request. Um, it's not really something that we want to do. What we'd rather do is get to the root of the problem. Um, like, you know, if, if, whenever someone asks for an option, we have to ask ourselves, is this just a difference between, you know, someone who's more casual or core, or is it, and, and someone who plays a lot, or is this a, a fundamental issue with the game that we can improve? And um, we definitely come down on the side of, nope, this is a fundamental aspect of the game that we feel like we can improve. Um, white items either need to do one of two things. <laughs> they need to not be there, or they need to be useful and interesting in some way. And so there's some people who are asking about, for example, rune words, and they're saying, hey, rune words makes white items awesome. And, and that's a really important thing, right? Like it's, I don't want to pick all of them up, but I'd love to know, uh, and this is something you know D2 did pretty well, is, is I'd be excited to find not all white items, but a very specific type of white item that I might be interested in at any given time. So I'm still leaving 90% of them on the ground, but you know one of them I, I will grab once in a while. And this actually goes to a philosophy, I'm going to generalize that out to items in general, is... Um, one of the litmus tests we've been using internally is the question, could I picture this item being useful for somebody? And a classic example is a quiver that has strength. <laughs> now, our items are randomly generated, but you pick up a quiver with strength and you're just like, that's just really dumb, right? Because no one's going to, to use that. So we're trying to address um, items that you can't imagine anyone using, whereas if you could at least say, you know what, it's not for me, but it could be for somebody else, then that's more acceptable. So if I see, I don't know, uh, like a, a belt with thorns, even like imagine in a, in a world where thorns is better, and we've talked about thorns as well, but let's just say thorns isn't great right now, but you know that in the world somebody out there is making a thorns build and they're really excited about it and pretend that that's actually a viable second tier build or whatever maybe even a premier build then even though you're not a thorns build you'll see that belt and say eh, okay a thorns belt i get it it's not for me but it's for somebody else and we kind of want white items to be the same way where you're not 
you're not offended that they're there because you know that they have a purpose and a use in the grand scheme of the economy as a whole, just maybe not for you right now. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, are you able to talk at all maybe about how ideas for uh, incentivizing people to use gear they find themselves? Is that something you guys talk about? Uh, yeah, that I've, I've seen. Um, I can't comment on that, okay. um, but uh, I will acknowledge <laughs> some of the uh, suggestions that have been made, which have all been very cool and talked about and considered. I mean, I, I, I guess I know that sometimes on the farms we don't respond to every suggestion made, but I guess I wanted to confirm that, yes, we've, we've seen them. You know, we've seen people say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if I could, you know, enhance items that I found myself to be 25% better. I think I saw that one like last week and that one's come up before. So yes, we've definitely seen those types of suggestions or, or people would say, what if you brought add socket back and you can only add a socket to an item that you found yourself and all sorts of suggestions like that. And, and they've, they've been tossed around. Um, like I said, I, I don't want to comment on, on anything specific, but um, it is something that, that is discussed. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the list you sent me through the email. So that's the only thing we haven't talked about yet is is other games. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but but this week's all Diablo for me. <laughs> yeah. You have your you guys are doing the hardcore leveling competition with the with the buff too, right? Yeah, so we'll be leveling a little bit faster and getting a little bit better items, I suppose. Yeah. I know uh, the last time you and I talked, uh, uh, well, I think I'd mentioned other games, but maybe maybe it's better that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I will say, I, I, there's, a, there's an internal StarCraft II tournament going on right now. I, I got uh, I got kind of wrecked. Huh. What, uh, what class do you play, or what race do you um, play on? I was, uh, I've been playing Terran. Nice. Um... I, I love um, so I love playing my demon hunter, um, and I think one of the most fun things about the demon hunter is stutter stepping, and I love stutter stepping marine marauder medevac packs in uh, in StarCraft. Like it's just it's just fun. So you're more into the micro than the macro aspect. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I enjoy that. Um, you know, I put all my barracks on one key and and spam out tons of marines and rotters and stuff like that. And my APM is not crazy high. I think my APM is like 130 or something like that. So I'm not. I'm definitely no no David Kim. But, uh, <laughs> but I do like stutter stuffing those marines, especially when they're all stemmed. Actually, <laughs> I, I feel like such a dork. I I lost my third game uh, in in the third round of our internal StarCraft two tournament to a guy who um, our armies collided and then I've never seen this before he built a whole bunch of changelings I don't know if you play much Starcraft 2 but he just he just pooped out like 20 changelings all over the map and, and I know like you probably everyone who like plays Starcraft 2 is gonna think I'm a total Starcraft 2 noob because of this but I, I went to try and stim and stutter step the changelings and 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 it, it cost me like three seconds of attention kind of like why can't I why can't I control these units and then finally I realized oh they're changelings and by that point his baneling army connected his banelings connected with my reins and I lost so oh, no. anyway total noob I know I'm a noob <laughs> you can call me a noob it's fine it's pretty funny well, I'm, you're, I'm definitely a bigger noob than you are. Um, my brother's really into StarCraft 2, and he... Most of what I know about the game, I learned from him. I've, I've only played Melee casually. Um, you're definitely more advanced than I am. But my viewers like to watch me get murdered in StarCraft 2, so I do play it every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's fun. I like it. Um, did you play the campaign? I didn't. Yeah, I was, I was going to play the whole thing on uh, on stream, but we had like a few other things going on, and by the time I got around to it, I felt like it had already been streamed enough times that the people who wanted to see it had seen it. But I, I still want to play the sure. HOTS campaign at some point, because I, I heard it's amazing. I watched a little bit of Kriparian playing it, and it looked really cool. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I uh, I think they, they just they did a phenomenal job, the team. They just they really did. Um, I had a lot of fun. Yeah.
That's really cool. Is there anything we haven't talked about that you... Uh, one with everything question. Okay, yeah, people want to talk about D3. I guess that's understandable that people <laughs> would want to talk about D3. I shouldn't be surprised by that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, strength on a quiver, modify the code. Uh, yes, stuff like that is what we're... Okay, so... Random items are, are kind of tricky, so we want to remove items that could not possibly be fathomable for anybody without removing the randomness. Um, we do feel like there's a danger if the items become too predictable. Um, because, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, you're still making your way up that, you know, replacement um, sequence of, like, getting better and better gear. And if we just make all the gear, you know, roll perfect stats always, then, you know, you'll roll out with perfectly, you know, statted things, and, and then there won't be as much... And you'll just have to roll better stats from there. Um... But more importantly, we don't want to dictate um, what stats are good. So strength on a quiver, I mean, I guess you could argue that a demon hunter who really, really cared about armor would want that. But, you know, I'm taking that argument to its extreme. We don't actually think that. But there are, we do want to get the game to, to a point where there are actually legitimate build choices. You know, like if someone were to say, why don't you just roll all items with the perfect six stats? Then my first answer would be, why are there six perfect stats? Why, why? The answer of what stats I want should be different based on play style and build. And so we need to get the game to that point. That's good. Yeah, maybe I I'll, was an earlier, yeah. I'll just, I'll just uh, leave you to the chat. You can pick out some questions there. And, and I'll, right. I'll, I'll apologize for some of the people, because I know there's bound... I'm not really reading chat, but there's bound to be a lot of jerks on there. It's just the nature of Twitch. <laughs> I apologize for those, but... Uh, uh, I, I find that the people um, in uh, in your chat channel have, have generally been really nice. Like, I've, I've um, lurked on a <laughs> bunch of different streams before and read about it and um, and, and read people's chat. And, and people in your, in your chat are really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do think uh, there's something to be said there. We definitely have one of the coolest channels on Twitch, but it is still on Twitch. <laughs> we get newcomers a lot. But yeah, thank you for that, I think. Yeah. Um, so someone earlier on was talking about, uh, I, I actually started answering and then I didn't. So that was, I, I should really mention one with everything. Um, one with everything, um, I think the most likely, again, non-committal because we, you know, trying different things. The most likely solution is when we um, uh, is to try and get a uh, a new set of resist affixes out the door. Um, again, no promises. Probably pretty far down the line because it, it's it's part of itemization. Um, is to make the school resistances roll higher than all resist. I think just even forget one with everything for two seconds. People, that's just weird, right? Like a lot of people have commented on that, and we agree. Like it's weird that fire resist, lightning resist, cold resist on an item rolls lower than all resist. So a little bit of history as to why that's ha the case is when school resist was way higher, um, then you were incentivized to keep a bunch of resist gear in your bags and swap them in when you came across, say, you know frozen or molten or mortar or whatever like that and we didn't really like that whole gear swapping thing so we said hey what if all resist was the highest and yeah the school resist and that idea you know was kind of better than gear swapping but i think we just traded one problem for another so we need to go back and allow the school resist values to be higher than the all resist values um when those higher values roll out, they will not roll on the same items as all resist. Um, and one with everything will still be a bonus, but it won't be such a ridiculous bonus that you're getting such a huge benefit. I'll give you an example. Um, let's say that all resist goes up to 80, then maybe I can get lightning resist on an item to say 
100 or 115. But I can't get, you know, that 115 plus another 80 all resist. So now I can wear an item and one with everything is still good um, if I'm, you know, gearing with those stats. Yeah. Wow, a lot of people are talking about caps. Um, we've talked about reforging. That's definitely come up. Um, we've also talked about um, transmog. Um, we've talked about um, open world, where you uh, can skip uh, story and cinematics. That, that's that's been you know what I shouldn't use the word like talk about what when I say talk about like I guess it's kind of ambiguous whether I mean you know oh yeah it was mentioned but as opposed to no we actually sat down and and assessed the production cost um, and time and you know weighed it against other opportunities I mean we we can't chase everything at once, so we have to look at the you know 100 things we could do and pick the ones that we want to do. Um, because uh, you know, like if we do, for example, um, a no quest open world mode, then we might not be able to do um, an alternate monster distribution uh, for an area. I mean, that's kind of a that's not a, that's not an accurate comparison, but but we definitely look at all the things that we'd like to do and, and alternate distribution. So I'll mention that like I would love if I came by an area and it wasn't always the same monsters. Um, Diablo two did some of that where you came through an area and the and the distribution was was different. It still made sense artistically for the area, but there was a little bit more variety. Yeah. We were just talking yesterday, and again, no pressure if this is uh, something that you don't want to talk about, about the 2 billion gold cap on the auction house, and we're kind of just trying to speculate on maybe the philosophy behind it, and uh, and what, what the disadvantages would be to raising the cap. I think the... Um, uh, Gold cap, it would be nice for it to be um, raised. Um, beyond that, I can't. I I can't say it's not really a design issue, honestly. Um, that one, I mean, everything related to the auction house um, affects more than just design. So unfortunately, I, I can't. I can't say much more. You know, there's. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Dead answer there. More about I saw the. I said that I sounded uh, like I'm bored with the game. I I I, I had, I'm sorry. I, I had to call that one out. I'm definitely not. But I was playing the um, uh, just last night. Um, got my um, got my monk and echoing theory with only uh, ten point five percent fear on it. So I was pretty stoked last night. Um, I guess I mean sometimes people say, "Do you guys even play the game anymore?" And I was like, "Yeah, I play the game every single night." And, uh, and I was, yeah, I was on, on my monk. Oh, you know what? I probably, yeah. Yeah, and I was, I was uh, playing away last night. Um, played with a friend of mine who... <laughs> so a friend of mine on the WoW team uh, and I were playing last night, and he plays an Archon wizard. And uh, he was just, you know, bringing all the pew-pew, and I was tanking everything, and I switched into Cyclone Strike um, to, to groove everything up, and it was tons of fun. Yeah, I can say when I was at Blizzard, uh, I don't think there was one person we talked to that wasn't actively playing the game and uh, and excited about their character. Um, will you ever be able to waypoint across all the different acts? Um, that would be very cool. Um, can't say much more than that. Yeah, I should mention that that he was he was rocking Archon because of the change to allow the duration to extend, and he was he was joking how with the monster density, 
Like, it goes, I don't know if you guys have this experience, those of you who are playing, where you're you're running through, say, Fields of Misery in Act 1. Oh, that's where you are now. <laughs> you're, you're running through Fields of Misery, and you see just this, like, huge pack of goatmen running at you, and all you think is like, oh, that's like 30 seconds of Archon right there. You know, it's just like, nom, 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 nom. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. I like how you can, like, automatically track your efficiency in Archon. If you're losing it a lot, you know you're not being as efficient. But And that change oh, yeah, is really nice. Recast. And, and you know you're, you're doing pretty well when you actually have to drop Archon to recast some of your buffs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, I have to bow out here. Um, Travis is going to step in. Um, I'm going to um, probably try to. I'm going to try and come by later on. What time are you streaming till? Um, I'm streaming for 36 hours, but the competition will be for the next uh, another five hours. Oh, you're going 36 hours continuous. Yeah, I had, I had planned an event for both the anniversary and for this game Grim Dawn that's coming out and Grim Dawn just happened to come out today. I was emailing with the creator, he didn't even he he had forgotten that it was the Diablo 3 anniversary when he released today, but uh yeah, so we're just doing both events today. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh well, um I will try to stop in again later this afternoon, but in the meantime, uh, I'm going to log out and hopefully uh Travis can make his way back in here soon. That sounds great. So is he going to He'll be logging on with his own team speak, or will he just be on yours? I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> give us, uh, give us a couple minutes to work it out. But cool, it sounds good. Be live. Great. Well, thanks for coming by, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, and thanks to everyone in the channel. Sorry, I know there was a lot of questions that that we didn't get to, but uh, uh, maybe another time. Great. So yeah, I know a lot of you guys wanted more specific answers to your questions, but I think most people are understanding that uh, that he, he can't give details. Obviously, that would be an official announcement, and they have to be careful about that stuff and, and choosy. And uh, and of course, they can't announce things that are still being worked on. But I, I, again, I think most of you guys are understanding of that. No, Wyatt Chang, really awesome guy. So is Travis Day. So I mean, the, the fact that they agreed to come by the stream and hang out with us today I think is a testament to that but uh, but I've been able to spend some time with them and, and I can vouch that they're really cool people <laughs> well, that was the one thing that was on the list I just thought about maybe we'll ask uh, Wyatt when he comes back was getting a job in game development or with Blizzard we weren't able to talk about it, but but it'd be interesting to hear about. Thanks, Dustin. It's nice of you. So yeah, I made a YouTube video kind of talking about today and saying that it was going to be a really exciting day, um, but I couldn't give any more details than that. I think you guys understand now. Um, yes, I'm, I'm sure he knows that, Lolo. You, I'm, I'm sure any th any information on the state of the game that you have, um, he has as well. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. We're gonna try going into slow mode on the chat. Maybe maybe just a 10 second slow mode at first. Does that sound good, Jixi? Um, ooh, a ring, attack speed. Um. Six vitality chats tonight. Um, just because the chat's going kind of quick, it's hard to keep up with. Um, I don't know, Jixie, I'm sorry. Uh, if one of the mods knows the command to do... Because if I do slow mode, I think it's going to be a 60 second slow mode, and that's a little harsh. But uh, if one of the uh, mods knows the command to do a 10 second slow mode, feel free to put it on. But if you just select it from the list, it'll, it'll do whatever is set at default right now. Um, so yeah, today you get 25 bonus experience and 25 bonus magic find. And uh, experience is multiplicative. 
and the magic fine is additive, but it goes over the 300% cap. So yeah, we're leveling a quarter faster today. See how high we can get up in this self-found hardcore leveling competition. Renzo Hello. P. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Is this Travis? Yeah, it's Travis. I'm using Wyatt set up this machine, so he's got a really weird push to talk key. <laughs> we had a whole discussion about his push to talk key. I can't remember what he ended with. It's on his like side mouse button, which is where I usually have like auto run in other games. So it's oh, kind of okay. awkward. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the stream. Yeah, happy to be here. How's uh, how's your leveling going? I think it's going a little slow. Maybe someone could fill me in on what level other people in the competition are. I haven't, I haven't talked about One much. billion. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, but I haven't died yet, and that's the important thing. Yeah, so I'm level 11. I just hit 11. Very nice. Uh, give me a second to log into Twitch. This thing is freaking out on me. No worries. So, uh, I think most of you guys probably know who Travis Day is. He's one of the main developers on Diablo 3. And um, probably most well known for his awesome itemization post he made a couple months back that got us all super excited for upcoming changes. I think that's probably the thing that most players are the most excited about right now. Surely you're over exaggerating. <laughs> no, that's definitely the of all the things we were looking forward to. That's definitely the one. Okay, help me out here. How do you change your your push to talk key in? Uh, what am I in? Team speak. Teamspeak. Yeah. So you, at the top, you can go to settings, and uh, let me leap out of here so I can see what it's called. Uh, I can. Uh, don't worry, I can figure it out as long as I can find it. Yeah, you just go to settings, options, and then be an option to. And you don't have to do push to talk if you oh want. Oh my god, that's so much better. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can Twitch chat work or not. What do you love on there? Loving a barb? Yeah, nice. it seems it seems like barb and witch doctor is the way to go if you're going hardcore. So is that yeah, hardcore? I uh, I'm not I don't do a lot of hardcore because <laughs> I'm a giant sissy and I always said I'd get really angry if I ever disconnected from the internet. But um, <laughs> I definitely was leveling a hardcore witch doctor at one point just because I was like, well, I'm gonna play hardcore. I'm gonna hide like a little girl and throw spiders at things that I can't see. <laughs> with lots of pets, so there you go. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, Witch Doctor is my first hardcore character. I have a new appreciation for Witch Doctor since then. Um, so I'm sure uh, viewers in the chat are going to be throwing out questions, and um, it's the internet, so a lot of the questions are, are just going to be mean. So I'll apologize ahead of time for that. But for the most part, people on the channel are really kind. Um, so you can take questions from there, but I could also ask you questions as well. And then if there's anything else you want to talk about, uh, you can throw yeah, it in. no, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. I can't remotely keep up with the rate at which yeah. the chat is scrolling, though. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I think uh, we're gonna put it into slow mode if we haven't already, so that people can't type quite as quickly. Um, but yeah, I. When, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying. Oh my god, there's too many questions. <laughs> Uh, I saw one that scrolled by about when will Elemental something something something. Uh, eventually, um, I actually do want to make Elemental effects do things again. Like I loved that about D2 myself back in the day. I think it's really cool. Added a lot to the game. Um, so there's definitely been a lot of talks about like how in the future we can reintroduce those and what they can do to make them interesting. Uh, beyond the obvious like Frost makes things slow and herp derp. <laughs> uh, I well, it's your stream, so do you yeah. have questions? We haven't chatted in a while. Um, Let's start with you, and then we can work to the audience. Yeah, uh, I guess we got a lot of questions answered from Wyatt, but uh, he's I, good I, for that. Yeah, I know uh, the thing we were that we held off on most was definitely itemization, and again, that's probably what people are excited about. I know you probably can't reveal too much more than was in your blue post. But are there things that have been talked about recently that you're excited about? 
or any design philosophy you could share with us? Just the process you go through. Uh, or what are we talking about here? Is uh, itemization. To item? uh, um, yeah. Uh, I, it's that's a long conversation. <laughs> um, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on itemization. Obviously, just because a I'm super opinionated, but mostly because I've I've done so much like reward scheme and itemization work over the years, um, especially on WoW. So I kind of chuckled when I started working on Diablo, and they were like, "Yeah, you can you can help us with ours." And I was like, "I've been down this road." <laughs> um, I, I'd say, if anything, I'm coming from WoW and working on Diablo now for the last I don't know what eight months, a year, something like that. The time is kind of a blur here. Um, <laughs> I'd say one of the things that I I value the most about Diablo is uh, is how much randomization works in its favor. Um, I think there's a lot of improvement in, in a lot of areas, some of which I've talked about before, obviously. like I think legendaries need to be way more game-changing. Um, I think there is a lot to be said for having like the holy grail of items that players can you know uh, strive to attain. Um, even as recently as yesterday, we were talking about, like, well, you know, what are, the, what are the boundaries on how crazy could we really get with legendaries or sets or whatever, and, um, like... What are the confines that we're working within? It's like, all right, well, bound, like, you know, extreme number one, anything that says makes the player invincible forever and always is probably too much. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think there's a lot to be said for having stuff out there that's just something that you can hope to one day acquire. And, and I talked to, you know, about, like, you know, D2 had rune words that were like, hey, this thing takes six different runes, and each rune is obscenely hard to find, and the end result is something amazing. So um, I was sort of using that as a guide for, like, you don't have to make everything bland just because you think players might get their hands on it. It's like, it's a it's an action RPG, right? Like, it's about feeling awesome and overpowered and... Um, you know, the, the extreme end of the spectrum that we were sort of like, yeah, even this is okay, as long as it's, you know, sufficiently difficult or time-consuming to attain, is like, what if there was a what if there was a set that is some undefined number of pieces, and the set bonus said, you have unlimited resources. Huh. Like, yeah, I, fuck it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, totally fine. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, like, uh, you know what, it sounds crazy, but it's the kind of thing where when you find the first piece of it, you look and you're like, oh my god, what could I possibly do to get my hands on this? Um, and, you know, I've talked about some of the other ideas before, like, I want boots that make the player, like, ignore mob collisions. Like, yeah, that's just, I don't know. I don't know what you'll do with that. You'll find, players will find cool uses for that kind of stuff. Um, so... Yeah, items is a long conversation. Legendaries is uh, is something I wanna, I really wanna like. If I would say what most of my effort right now is going into, it's trying to figure out how to really fix that to give players things to strive for. And everything intermediary matters too, right? Like the rare gear that you find, or you know, finding a good blue at low levels, or having a good experience. Like we want you to see good items, you know, in your first playthrough of the game, and not have them just be something that you only see after you invest a hundred hours because um, it's important that everyone enjoys their play experience um, but I, I do spend my personal time focusing mostly on like what does the the grand picture look like you know five years from now when we no longer work on this game do players have things that they can still be you know searching for and wanting to get their hands on if they you know come back to play the game two years later or whatever like someone buys it for them on a Christmas sale because um, those are the memories I have about Diablo 2 like I played it you know obscene amounts and uh, and I didn't play like every day all day for five years but like when it first came out I remember I was playing EverQuest and I took a break from EQ for a few months and played Diablo and then like three years later some of my buddies bought it and played it and I bought it again and played it again and it was still a great game and that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of stuff I I want to like ensure for the future of Diablo is that it remains a game that there's always exciting and new things to find even if you come back multiple times over the course of years and it just stands up to the test of time yeah I think that that kind of stuff is probably the most exciting for us I I mentioned to Wyatt that uh, I really like the idea of there being builds that are overpowered but extremely hard to get the gear for. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that's completely reasonable. And um, 
uh, like some really like the really crap examples of ideas that have come up as of late that I'm like, yeah, it seems totally reasonable. It's like, uh, you know, items that enable builds. Like, I want there to be items where if you find them, you go, holy crap, I'm making a new character for this because this <laughs> thing is crazy. Um, and I mean, I, I would throw out like random examples that I would have, but they would all be wrong. Um, but the crappiest example is like, I don't know, it, what if there was a voodoo mask and it was like doubles all pet damage? Like, that's neat. Like, I, that's probably at the weaker end of the power spectrum because pet damage sucks. But um, it's certainly something where if you're not a witch doctor and you saw it, you'd be excited. Or if you are a witch doctor, you're like, oh man, maybe I'll try a new spec to see if this is good. Which hopefully it is because I shouldn't suck at my job. But. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's it's really cool. Like, I think a good example that fell a little bit short, but is in the right vein of idea, is the uh, the three hundred spear. Um, the item itself sucked mostly because, like, yeah, the weapon DPS sucked, and there's all these requirements that you needed for a weapon to even be usable because math says so. Like, all right, does it have percent damage? Does it have a elemental type? Does it have a socket? Does it have crit damage? Um, but the 300 spear idea in and of itself is completely sound, which is if all things were equal, uh, a weapon that said makes you do 40% more damage with weapon throws suddenly is opening up a spec you may not have played before. Um, and I think that's that's a good example. And, I, and I've used other crap examples like, I don't know, there could be a wizard wand that says allows you to have a second hydra active and maybe use that with some other set or legendary items that make the lizard more powerful or you choose not to do that and you... I don't know. I don't know. I'm still <laughs> still compiling ideas on this front, but uh, I mean, this is the general design direction I'm trying to take with the items in the game. Well, that's really exciting. Um, I imagine you can't say too much about it yet, but my viewers are going to kill me if I don't at least mention it. Is there any discussion right now about PvP? Um... There is discussion. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm not really going to touch on that because I don't want to get set on fire by people <laughs> who find my house. But I will say I'm a huge PvP fan, um, and I really want us to figure out how to do it properly. Um, I, I, I personally really want it to be good, and I really want it to be in, and uh, sooner than later. Beyond that, I can't say a whole lot because I don't, even, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to talk about that without, like I said, people looking my address up online and then burning my house to the ground. <laughs> no it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, lively topic. Yeah, I imagine. Um, well, yeah, you said itemization talk is a long talk. Uh, I don't think anyone here would complain about you talking about that. So, if if you have stuff to say on that feel free, we're not going to get bored. Um, <laughs> sure. Or if there's things in chat that, that you want to address. Uh, I'm trying I'm trying to read this. <laughs> That's really scrolling way too quick for me. I saw something about, do I like potatoes? Yes, I love potatoes. <laughs> I, I tell my fiance all the time, I'm like, I, honey, <clears throat> all we ever need for me to eat my entire life is like cow and potatoes, and I'm good. Like, uh, cow is the most delicious animal ever. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read some of this stuff. Um, I mean, I don't know. Items, I, I can talk, like, I, I can and have talked for hours and hours and hours about items, but really, I need some direction in terms of, like, what you guys want to know about, because I can just ramble. Um, I don't mind talking about them. Um, I just, like, I have to phrase anything I say is under the context of down the road and not, not like, immediately, which is something I, I was slightly saddened to read like when I made the uh, the item blog post and people were like, oh, they're they're fixing items tomorrow! And I was like, oh, <laughs> good God, I don't know how many ways to say this is going to take me time, but this is, you know, this is sort of me trying to communicate with the community because I know there was a lack of communication for such a long time. Um, and then in the absence of, of us talking to people, they just assumed the worst. So, yeah. Um, what, all right, guys, what do you want to know about what do you want to know about items? I can chat about that. Mm -hmm. Please right. ramble. I, oh, don't worry, I do. <laughs> um, or I, I could ask one thing. Is your end, end goal to have it so all legendaries are are good, or are there still going to be legendaries that just get unlucky rolls and end up just turning into brimstones? Um, okay. Uh, well... 
uh, it's, there, there's going to be a spectrum, obviously. Like, no matter... Okay, I'll say this. I've, I've used this example before. Um, today, people complained a lot when the game first shipped about, like, oh, legendaries are too rare, I never find any. Um, and the thing I always told them was, like, ah, they're not really as rare as you think. Like, I mean, they are based on whether or not you're wearing Magic Find and then how much. Because um, when the game first came out and people were compl making that complaint... I was running around with Max MF, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, I find like one an hour. And they're like, I've been playing for weeks and I haven't found one. It's like, well, okay, problem one, uh, there's a massive discrepancy in like reward rate between the player base, and we need to address that. Um, and that's mostly because Magic Find void, like the gap between someone with a lot of Magic Find and someone with none is big. Um, but ignoring that, I don't even think it's a problem that they're few and far between. I, do, I think the problem is that when you find one, it's probably not even good. Like, it's it's almost a foregone conclusion at this point for most players that if you find an orange, it's garbage and you shard it. Um, and I think there will always be the legendaries that people look at and go like, oh, this is crap. And they're going to say that because either it's not for your character or it's for a, you know, a certain... Uh, character spec you don't enjoy playing, like maybe you find a 300 spear, imagining that it's a foregone conclusion down the road that it has good DPS, it's like some barbs will find that and go, oh, this is a crappy legendary, I don't want this, and they'll shard it, and that's fine, like, as long as it's good for somebody, and it truly is good for somebody, not just theoretically good for somebody, um, so, I mean, the short answer to that is, yeah, everyone out there will still once in a while find a legendary and they'll just be like eh shard it and that's fine um but the hope is that if you're playing a, if you're playing this barbarian right here and you see a legendary mighty two-handed weapon laying on the ground i want you to immediately pick it up and go hell yes id and equip and then worry about reading what it does because <laughs> you should just know it's better than what you're using if you don't have a legendary already that's really cool. Um, and, I mean, a good example is, like, if anyone's ever played Borderlands here, like, Borderlands, their system was very much a Diablo system, right? Where it's just like, oh, rare and big numbers. And they did fruity stuff. Um, and doing fruity stuff is cool. The problem is you just need to make sure that the math on the fruity item isn't bad. If you have a legendary weapon with 50 DPS, don't have a rare weapon with 400 DPS, because then, yeah, the legendary's bad. So, I guess I'm, I'm proposing a world where if you've got a rare weapon with, and I'm making these numbers up and I know they're wrong, and people will say I'm stupid, but I'm just putting it in scale. If you have a 100 DPS rare weapon, you should assume that the, the legendary weapon is going to have at least 120, if not 200. So, it should be on a spectrum of amazing to holy crap instead of garbage to usable. I like that. So, so maybe if, if someone inspected your character and saw that you had X number of legendaries, that would be impressive amongst itself. And... It, it should be, yeah. I mean, you should... I say it all the time, but like, rarity equals power is kind of like one of the design philosophies I've been driving towards since I started on the team, where um, having things that are really rare is completely reasonable. Um, but the expectation is that if it's rare, it's rare for a reason, and the reason is generally because it's better. You shouldn't have things that are incredibly hard to find and then also terrible, which is kind of the world we're in right now. Um, so, I mean, fixing that to where an orange is to a yellow what a yellow is to a blue. You know, you, you pretty much assume if you find a yellow, you're going to put that on instead of your blue, and it's going to be better. Yeah. Um, what, what about changes to thorns or, or other affixes that aren't uh, widely used right now? Um, affixes that aren't used right now. Um, I think, if, so Thorns is just, it's weak. Like, it totally needs love, and, you know, we have plans to, Im I want to say improve it, but for many people it'll still suck, which is fine. Um, again, because it'll be a not-for-my-playstyle kind of thing. Um, but what we really want to fix there is that there is at least people who would like to find it, um, whereas right now there's no one. Um... We've, we've talked about down the road, like, changing it so Thorns is, uh, has its damage increased by your primary stat. 
so that you know, if you have a crap load of strength and you want to make a thorns barbarian build that's tanky and does a bunch of damage to people, say in hardcore, um, then that would be a completely viable build. Um, other stats, uh, what other stats are bad for people? I mean, there's stuff like pickup radius, but that's very, like, there's witch doctors who love it. Um, what else? What are some bad stats? Um, yeah, I guess there's less desirable stats. Thorns is probably the best example of a stat that... Health globe bonus? Yeah, health globe bonus. <laughs> yeah, it's not that good. Um, that one's... <clears throat> I don't know, I've, I've got a problem. It's not so much with health globe bonus, but with the fact that I kind of dislike that health globes are such an integral part of the game at low level, and then at end game sort of become this non-factor. Um, I, I don't have a solution for that yet. I don't know, it's sort of something we talk about, and it keys into the, you know, hey, this stat sucks. Like, yeah, because you don't like health globes anymore. And if we could find a way to make you like health globes again in, you know, the end game, suddenly that stat's not garbage. We tried to make it better by saying, okay, and it increases your potions, but it's like, yeah, even then, who really wants that on their item? Yeah, is is part of the issue that uh, players stack so much life on hit and life steal at, at end game? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a lot to do with it, right? Like, um... I don't, so, for the record, like, I came on to Diablo after all the game was done and shipped, but I was just like, I love this game so much, I want to work on it, I want to help make it better, and, uh, yeah, that, that's one of those things, like, I can't give you a good answer, because honestly, I don't 100% know what decisions were made, but if I had to take a guess, then it would probably be right, it's that, um, you know, it was the, every, all of those things were sort of made in a vacuum before the game was shipped, before, you know, the designers knew exactly how the players were going to interact with the game. And that happens, right? Like, you have ideas, and you're like, yeah, I think this is what's going to happen. Uh, and, I mean, health globes are a really integral part of your low-level gameplay experience, right? Like, you don't have infinite life when you're running around on this level. What are you up to now? 12, Barbarian? Yeah. Like, those health globes matter, so making them stronger is... If you picked up an item that had, like, doubles the strength of a health globe right now, you maybe put it on. Uh, it wouldn't be total garbage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you approach, you know, infinite sustainability and infinite effective health points uh, without needing health globes, which are inconsistent and random, um, then yeah, it becomes pretty clear really fast, like, why why that stat isn't very well received. And there could be ways to make that better, and we, we have talked about that, right? Like, we've talked about maybe there's ways to tie it into the monk heals, where, you know, Health globe bonus healing from health globe is to a monk what pickup radius is to a witch doctor. You know, like we we could make them more compelling, um, and and I think the general rule is, if a stat is like bad for everyone, if you look at a stat and you can't even imagine who that would be good for, then yeah, we probably need to give it some attention. Makes sense. You know? I'm realizing I'm not tanky enough for where I am, and I'm trying to decide if I want to. Go back and beef up more, or just keep pushing. <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> I'll, I'll get you killed if you listen to me, though. No, not the same way. I've, this is our third competition. I've died on. I died on the first two because I just. I'm like, I'm just gonna go for it. Nice. Always the yeah, I was. I logged into my hardcore witch doctor the other day for giggles after we patched and was briefly playing around with it. And I was in the field, and in the middle of fighting a champ pack, I was like, man, this skill sucks. And I pulled up my skill pane and was like, screw this, I'm changing this thing. And my buddy who plays hardcore was watching me and, like, terror was stricken across his face. Like, what are you doing? You're in hardcore. <laughs> I was like, eh, whatever, this is easy. This shit's low MP. <laughs> and then, funny enough, like, I, uh, I decided I got to the Blyle fight with my, my hardcore witch doctor, and I was like, fighting there and I was like ah oh, man I have the wrong skill set up for this and I was like did it again and I pulled up my screen in the middle of that fight and was like swapping out one of my skills for something else because I was like this is terrible and I closed my skill screen and noticed I was surrounded uh, <laughs> by the snakes and I was like uh and I just started pushing all my buttons and I, I think I lived with like five health and was like okay I learned my lesson I'm not going to pull up my skill pain <laughs> hardcore anymore nice <laughs> Did you have a, is it Vision Quest that, I, maybe I'm getting it wrong, the one that brings you back when you die? Uh, it's Spirit Vessel. Spirit no, Vessel. I wasn't yeah. high enough level. I mean, that character is like 15 or 20 or something. Oh, gotcha. So I would have been dead dead if I hadn't tabbed back in the moment I did. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's see. Um, what other questions y'all have or you have or anyone have? 
Or what do you want to ramble about? Hmm. I, I, the thing I'm most interested in is a self-found mode. I already talked to Wyatt about it. Wasn't able to say too much, so I imagine you can't say too much either. Um, hmm. But if you do have any thoughts on it, this is something I'd be interested in. Um. Yeah. Uh, why it's why it's a big fan of self found mode, um, but we we debate that internally. <laughs> not like the validity of self found, but whether or not we actually try to support that as a gameplay style. Because um, at some point, like yeah, it's cool, but at the same time, we don't need to support every kind of uh, behavior that emerges in the game with an you know full play style within the game. Like we don't need hardcore, softcore, self found X Y Z because someone liked them. Um, I will say, I think people find uh, Self Found to be so enjoyable because honestly, the the game's more fun when you when you pull the auction house out of the equation. When you feel like the things that you have on your character are something you can be proud of and not just something that everyone assumes you purchased, um, I think you have a better you get a better sense of uh, accomplishment. So I think there is a really strong psychological. Um, draw to sell found. I mean, I've thought about doing it before just because, like, yeah, I don't know, I can buy anything I want. My my characters are, you know, Paragon, I don't know, 60, 70 or something, I forget. Um, but there is something really compelling about the idea of just finding things on my own, especially because it, it gets back to, you know, the heart of what made D2 items fun, which is you got excited when you found things on the ground, and that doesn't really happen anymore because um, generally the auction house or the items your friends give you, whatever the case, like whatever the items you're getting, usually they're coming from somewhere else, and they're usually so powerful that you know everything you ever find is going to be bad by comparison. Um, and that really does sort of take away a lot from the gameplay experience. Instead, it puts the focus on... Uh, the XP bar moving up, which is great, but that's a very um, rhythmic sort of thing. It's it's not like sometimes your XP bar decides it's going to give you three levels for no reason and you get really excited, right? Like, the XP bar just sort of slowly moves along and you make progress. Um, but finding the ex the cool item or the good legendary is what really mixes up your, your gameplay experience, so... I think that's really important, and I think um, for a lot of players that's lost. And I won't say all, because a lot of players don't use the auction house. A lot of players play the game through story mode and then are done, and they play it like you know any console game, and that's fine too. Um, but what's important to us is that you have fun, and, and that's something that players want something from our game that we're not currently delivering for some of them, and they try to you know find their own fun. Um, so I, I think there's, there's something there that we've you know, talked about, and it comes up a lot, and, you know, we may pursue something like that one day. Um, it's hard to say, but I think it's it's totally legitimate of a play style, and I think it's pretty cool, and I think anyone who hasn't tried it should give it a whirl and, you know, make a guy and just commit to, I'm only going to wear things I find on my own and, and see how they feel. Yeah, I think you should try it. I've, <laughs> I've considered it as well. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I, I, uh... People were trying to get me to do it for a while, and, and I was kind of hesitant. I wasn't that excited about it, but uh, ever since the first time I did it, that's pretty much the only way I play now. I, I think, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of the issues that you've touched on, I I have uh, full faith that y that you guys are going to really uh, address all those issues, but for right now, I feel like the, the game works just better, to be completely honest, in self-found. Um, but it sounds maybe like your theory is we can f address those issues and, and not have the need for so many players to play self found Um, I, nah. Sorry, um, I didn't mean to. No, no, I mean, it's, it's totally cool. I guess what I'm getting at is I think self found is very cool. I, I personally feel like the game does feel better um, when... Uh, TLDR, the heart of the issue is... People who play self-found, what they're really doing is t saying to themselves, I want the reward game to matter. I want to be able to get excited about things I find on the ground. And we would say, yes, we want the game to always feel like that for everybody. And right now it doesn't, and it needs, it needs work. Um, what that ends up meaning, I can't say. I don't know. You know, like we're still working it all out. But what 
players are doing when they opt into Cellfound is basically they're playing the game they the way they want the game to be played. Be, um, they want that to be the right way to play, right? Like you yeah. want to get excited about finding items, and we want you to. But right now, the auction house sort of sets the bar for like what a good item is so high that you know 99% of players will never find something better than they bought for 100,000 gold off the auction house. And that becomes a crappy feeling. So I'm saying I want to get the self-found feeling for everyone, like ultimately. And I don't know what that means. I don't know how we could do it necessarily. Um, but yeah, we, we want items to feel exciting. We want you to get excited about loot on the ground. And that's a lot of why I say, like, you know, I'm putting a lot of my time into trying to think of, like, legendary things that are mind-blowingly awesome because we want you to have those things in the game. Yeah. Um, and, 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 yeah, it's just going to take time. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think I agree with you that it would be better that everyone got the reward that you get from playing Southbound without having to add a new... Uh, sector of the game, so to speak. Um, and I think I would probably switch back to playing regular if uh, if I yeah, if I did feel like I uh, was earning most of my gear and, and to improve uh, most, I had to find it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, just, I saw a question scroll by about primary stats and certain items. Uh, let me see. Yes, that I, I think I answered this question before somewhere, but yeah, we... Dex rolling on a bar belt and strength rolling on a quiver, like, yeah, we... I will always fight for as much random as possible within the Diablo world, and the itemization especially. However, there are lines where if you look at a bar belt and you go, why in the name of God is this... Why can Int even be the primary stat when the bar will never want Int and no one that can wear Int can use it? Um, yeah, we agree. Uh, we, we changed that... Um, for one of our future updates already, I forget when, but we changed that a while back. Or like, this is dumb. Uh, you can never roll primary dex on a bar belt. You can still roll dex plus strength because that also lets you get strength primary and then dex strength, and you end up with a huge strength number, and that's fine. But yeah, you're not going to find a quiver with like 300 strength. <laughs> yeah, some people are excited about that. Yeah, I'm trying to read through the chat. I, I'm not keeping up with this chat very well while talking to you, and the rate at which it... Ah, it's slowed down now, at least. I can, can kind of keep up. But yeah. Are you just farming this one room? Are you that big of a sissy? What is this? <laughs> you see my health? <laughs> I don't know how delayed it is, but uh, I'm I'm barely stayed alive. That's why I'm farming. <laughs> <laughs> You're more of a man than me. I don't even like playing hardcore. <laughs> Giant sissy. <laughs> Um, I, I just realized someone brought up a rule that I forgot to address. I, I said no buying gear from vendors and forgot to mention if you can buy potions. As you guys seen, I've already been buying potions, so I apologize to anyone who thought you couldn't. Uh, I just forgot to address it. You can buy potions. So if you see other people competing, they don't know, you can answer. Yes, you can buy potions. I apologize for not thinking of that. Weapon damage rolls. Uh, yeah, no, um, so... Again, uh, as I said, I think random is, is hyper-important to a game like Diablo. At the same time, there's, there's degrees, right? Um, and one of the things I've talked about a lot is I think there are certain areas of the game where there's too much random, and we need to rein it in some. Um, and I think weapons are the primary offender to me in that vein. Um, there's, there's so many moving pieces that you need to roll for a weapon to be good. It's, it's pretty offensive, like... You've got to roll your elemental damage, and then it's got to be a high roll on the elemental damage. I just noticed I cut my finger somehow. Oh, well, um, you've got. I don't. I don't even. I just look down. I'm like, why is there red on my finger? How did I manage that? Uh, whatever. Um, you've got to roll elemental damage. You've got to roll percent increase damage. Generally, you have to roll crit damage. You also have to roll a socket. Then you want to roll a primary stat. And you know, weapons can only have six things, and that's five right there. Like, bam, five of the things that your weapon is going to have out of its six have to be these for the weapon to be considered, you know, good. And and good is a moving target, and good is also set because it's so easy to find things on the auction house. But those are the things that you must have, and they must all be really high rolls. And I think that's a bit extreme, right? Like, in the vacuum of 
if you look at a chess piece, you're looking like, I don't know, did it roll my primary stat? It did? Cool. Did it roll a decent amount? Okay, I'm happy with that. But then when you look at a weapon, it's like, did it roll these five things? Or at least, you know, it had to probably at least roll um, elemental damage, percent damage, and your primary stat. If you if you choke down that there's no socket and crit damage. Uh, but really, I mean, all of that boils down to your weapon is the biggest item on your character in terms of, like, raw character power. Um, all of the things it does really just get distilled down into one big number when you mouse over the weapon. It's either going to say plus, you know, 10,000 DPS or minus 80,000. And yeah, that's extreme. That's way too extreme. Um, we've talked about basically taking stuff like uh, percent weapon damage, um, re reducing it to the numbers more similar to like the attack speed on weapons where, yeah, it's nice if it's there, but if it's not, it's no big deal. Um, we've talked about taking the range on the uh, weapon damage roll, the elemental damage, and shrinking the variance. Like, variance is important, but the difference between a good weapon and a bad weapon shouldn't be, like, ten times the power. It should be, you know, within a range, right? Like, if the weapon's ranged from 400 to 600, like, the 400's still, quote-unquote, bad, but it's not, you know, ten times weaker than the best weapon. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I don't, I can't really give details on exactly what I plan on doing because that's still being worked out. But we agree that yeah, it's a problem. I don't like it. Hey, an orange is it good? Yeah, it's, um, it's Dexvite. Uh, I mean, it's better uh, than what I have, but uh, nice. actually, I it's, it's my, pretty good overall. Yeah, I, get, I guess the stream is a little bit behind because I asked you and you already knew this. Ah, yeah, yeah, I, that's uh, that's neat. Yeah, even, was, even that item. Right? Like, I look at that item and I'm like, yeah, I guess that's cool. What is the thing it's doing? Like, what makes that special? N nothing. Like, nothing makes that special. What does it have? 2% attack speed. It's special because it has attack speed, which bracers normally can't have. Like, okay, yeah, it's a technically a good item, but that's really a boring reason for an item to be good. <laughs> like, I, I really mean it, and I really want every legendary and set item to have something unique about it. Like, when you, when you think back and people talk about, like, oh, Wind Force and, oh, Enigma, and, which don't even get me started and, no, we'll never do Enigma again. Um, <laughs> but when they talk about these legendaries or things they remember from D2, they talk about them and they remember them because they did something special, right? Like, Wind Force did knock back and Breeza pierced with all your shots, right? Like, they don't talk about, oh, man, the 600 decks that Breeza had. Woo! Um, and, and that's really what I feel like is missing from the game, and that's really what I'm getting uh, back to. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I kind of I kind of die a little inside when I look at those bracers, and I'm like, yeah, I guess they're technically good, but God, those are really boring. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I said it before, but yeah, I think we're all really excited about that idea too. I think, I think you're right. I think that would make a tremendous uh, difference to the game. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Uh, ever be a ladder? Um, we are discussing and looking into ladders that may be in the future of Diablo. I can't promise anything. Um, I'm trying to read. I'm trying to, like, rattle off answers to these questions what once in a while. You made a blue post once that I really liked, and uh, I would like Which to one? hear if you had any more to say about it. You said, because actually, I think I said almost the same thing word for word, so <laughs> maybe it's. Okay, anyways. Um, you had said. That when a player sits down to play Diablo, you want the first thing they say to be, what do I feel like doing yeah, today? Yeah. Totally. That, I've said that a lot. Um, that's It's a problem with how the game currently works versus how it should work in my mind. Um, right now, I mean, there's just... I don't know. The game's lacking a lot of the randomization it needs, right? Like, for starters, the items need a lot of love. Um, beyond that, like... The, like what you're doing right now, right? Like you're farming this one room that is predetermined set of spawning creatures. Like there's nothing random going on here. You're basically like flipping a dungeon in in, in any other game, as far as like the gameplay is concerned. And that's that's not really in the spirit of you know Diablo in my mind. Like my mind, what I remember and what I love about Diablo and what I think everyone loves is, yeah, you might be doing the same thing. But the play experience is different every time, right? Like, it's a random dungeon, or it's random monsters, or there's something different. 
Um, and right now you don't have that with what you're doing. Um, there's also, there's just a lack of things to do. Um, and that's something else I want us to address. Like, in my, in my perfect world, and I've said this all the time, and I stand by it, um, we want to present the player with a spectrum of, of things to do, right? Like, I want you to be able to sit down at your computer and say, and Hellfire Rings were a good, like, stepping stone in that direction, but we need, like, a long pathway, right? We need to heal a brick road of choices. Right now we have, like, two. Um, you should you should be able to say, all right, well, it's a Friday night, and I've got, you know, five hours to play. I'm going to play all night. Like, what do I want to do tonight? And there should be options for, like, this is what I want to do, to spend five hours having fun playing this game that I love playing and farming items and trying to find the awesome loot that I want. Um, and on the flip side, there should be options of, like, uh, it's a lunch break, i got 30 minutes, I don't really want to get too invested, but I want to do something to play the game and have fun and contribute to my character's growth and development. Um, and, and providing players with options, right? Um, I, we have plans, I won't get into the plans, but, but we need more of them, and it shouldn't be a foregone conclusion that if I sit down to my level, you know, Paragon 50 character and I'm going to play Diablo tonight, I shouldn't just assume, yeah, I'm going to do the Alkaiser run, or I'm going to do, you know, the, uh, the Vault of the Assassins run. Like, the fact that there are those predefined runs that are literally, like, very specific non-randomized parts of our game and even then all you're really doing is just maximizing the way in which you farm XP um, we, need, we need more things to do like I want you to be able to choose to like I'm gonna farm I don't know Belial because Belial has something that I want or I'm gonna try and farm XP or I'm gonna go you know try and put together the rest of the set that I want or whatever the case is I don't know um, but yeah yeah totally need more things to do in the game and we need to present the player with a, a spectrum of diverse gameplay options and let them pick what suits them and their mood on any given day in an hour and play session. Yeah. Is uh, just something along the lines of Endless Dungeon come up much in those kind of discussions? Oh, it comes up all the time. Um, yeah, we, we talk about Endless Dungeon. Um, Endless Dungeon, actually, it's, it's funny. When you bring up that phrase, it's, it's something <laughs> that people will heatedly debate what that is supposed to mean. Um, I have my own take, and I will, it, I will infer that what I think people want out of an Endless Dungeon is, A, a, you kind of want a measuring stick to say, like, oh, I can make it to level 200 of the Endless Dungeon. But I think, really, it's just a matter of I want to farm Diablo and kill lots of monsters and not have to do stupid al runs. Like, I just want to kill random floors of things over and over again and get loot and XP and hurrah. Um, so, I mean, that's my interpretation of what people want out of an endless dungeon. Um, I don't know, though. Everyone's different. And God, I can't... I hate what, I hate you for what you're doing. I can't... I, the God, we, I have to fix this. <laughs> oh, then I'm just doing this over and over again. Oh. What you're doing is 100% the right way to play, and I hate that. I hate that like, farming this room over and over is like, this is the smart thing to do. Farm this fucking two frames of the exact same monsters in the exact same layout. It's just so not in the spirit of what this game should be. I, I kind of cry a little bit when I watch it. But well, I'm going to... High five. It's the best XP per hour. Keep it up. <laughs> I think I'm going to... Start progressing again, so you don't have to watch it anymore. No, I'm totally getting dude. <laughs> no. Arm on, you got a competition. <laughs> no, I think I I now have revenge, and uh, and one of my viewers mentioned that I had forgotten to put a passive slot, so now I think I'm tanky <laughs> enough to progress. <laughs> hey, got the passive. That's no big. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're overrated. Yeah. <laughs> well, we increase paragon. What? Increase the paragon levels? Um. I have plans for the Paragon system. Um, they're they're kind of involved. Um, so the Paragon system will be getting better eventually. Yes, won't go into more than that yet. It's, uh, I I feel like sometimes I just imply things from uh, or infer things rather from blue posts. So uh, maybe you hadn't said this exactly. I know you had talked about custom character customization. Um, and maybe tying that into Paragon somehow? I would like to, yes. Um, no, I mean, character customization, uh, 
again, it's action RPG, part of an RPG, like the the fantasy of you know being this character or you know progressing or developing this character is your barbarian is different than my barbarian is different than that guy's demon hunter, right? Like the fantasy is like you are in some way unique, distinct, etc., from everyone else. And a lot of that has to do with character customization, and that's why a lot of people get really excited when they you know talk about items or um, paragon customization or they want you know to assign attributes um people just want more ways to distinguish themselves from each other right like yeah. we don't all want to be kratos like i want to be conan but i want my conan to be called you know bob the slayer and i want him to be different from your guy um, so uh, i personally want to hook uh, progression or customization into the paragon system but uh there's a lot of work still to be done there, and a lot of the ideas are still sort of not finalized. Um, but yeah, I want that, and I think players should one day expect to see that. Wow. Yeah, that's that's something that I'd be... We went, we went back and played D2 on the stream, like, uh, probably a few months ago, and I forgot how much I loved the skill tree. And I know skill tree isn't exactly what you guys were thinking of, or not necessarily, at least. Um, but yeah... You get, I think, a little bit more sense of ownership and pride in your character. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and that's more to do with just the fact that, like, you customize your guy, right? And I think that's the important part when people talk about the skill system, which it was fun. Um, it was also full of just black holes and traps for the players to make. Like, I remember my first bar or uh, Necro on D2. Um, like I, you know, back then we we didn't have the internet like you kids today. I mean, we had it, but there was there was no like you know forums where people had intelligent conversation or you know solid wiki pages. It was just like it was sort of the wild wild west. It was like I don't know, I'm gonna make a character. What's he gonna be? <laughs> Whatever I click on, that's what it's gonna be. Yeah. Uh, and I remember like I, I played the game that way, and I had a lot of fun for a while, right? Like I was like, oh, I have an army of skeleton mages, and then my Shitty skeletons are gonna tank for my shitty skeleton mages. And I was like, this is amazing, and it worked pretty well. And then I got to nightmare, and I was like, oh man, this isn't working so well. And then I got to hell, and every skeleton I ever summoned would die in one hit, and I had to kill a monster to even summon one of my shitty skeletons. <laughs> and I was like, this is the worst, most unplayable character slash game ever. And it was more, it was miserable, right? Like, but those are the things people don't really remember about the skill tree. So. I've gone on record as saying, like, I think the old Diablo skill system is, it's outdated. I, I firmly stand by that, because people have fond memories of it, but at the same time, there are just as many people who had a really bad gameplay experience, because of it, like, for a lot of, you know, just gamers in general, right, like, if you hit a brick wall, if you're suddenly dying a lot and you can't figure out why, and you're playing a game like D2, where your choices are permanent, and you can't change anything about it, your inclination is not, well, I'll re-roll and make a new character and fix it. It's like, no, I just quit your game. Like, I'm, I'm done. Like, the game is too hard. This sucks. I quit, right? Yeah. Um, so, customization, good. Um, giving players the false choice is bad. Like, I call it the illusion of choice all the time. Just because you can choose between A and B, if B says do plus one damage and A says do plus a thousand damage, all we're letting you do is screw up your character. And that's never good. So, uh, in any case, I saw something. Someone asked something about loot tables in Soulbound. What does that mean? Um, what, are, what are loot tables? I think uh, what they're talking about is making it so that certain bosses drop certain legendaries. So you could, if you wanted a certain uh, item, you could farm a certain area. Oh, is that what they were talking about? I'm guessing. Oh, I think by Soulbound they mean uh, having the the uh, best item. Soulbound. Yeah. But I think the meaning of like, buying on pickup is probably what they. We'll, we'll assume what you said is correct since that guy's <laughs> not speaking up, and if he is, I can't keep up with chat. Um, loot tables, um, I think they're totally legit. I think that's fine. Um, I have no objection at the idea of like the butcher can drop the butcher's cleaver. But I could also find the butcher's cleaver anywhere in the game. Like, that seems fine. Um, I don't like the idea of putting the butcher's cleaver on only the butcher and nowhere else in the game because I think that it's a little degenerate like that but that also that idea sort of feeds into what I was saying before about like the idea of 
when you sit down to play Diablo, you have choices on what you want to do, right? Like, maybe I want to farm XP, maybe I'm going to farm the Butcher, because I want the Butcher's Cleaver. Like, yeah, that, that seems totally fine to me. Um, I don't have any objections there. Soulbound, Soulbound is a touchy topic. Um, I will say, years and years and years of working on WoW kind of took it for granted. Like, it's just a foregone conclusion, like, this is part of the game. Um, working on Diablo, seeing all the problems that, you know, we have to deal with that is different from WoW, because obviously they're different games, but um, there's parallels to draw. Um, I will say there's value in Soulbound. Um, I think it helps contribute to the sense of ownership of, you know, you earned something because obviously you didn't buy it from some dude in China for $2. Um, but, I don't know. There's degrees. <laughs> there, there are degrees. And I, I think it's a possibility that Soulbound could find its way into the game in, in a larger sense than it has already. And, and, you know, we've got some, right? Like, we put in the... Uh, we put in all the new crafted recipes that took Soulbound reagents and created Soulbound items. And that was partly because like, we wanted to give players a reason to get farm the creatures in the game again instead of just you know expecting to buy everything off the auction house. And it worked, and you know it totally did everything we wanted it to do. And I would say it worked because everything that you had to farm was Soulbound and the product that you made was Soulbound, and it's got its, it's, got its strengths. Yeah. Do you think um, one of the bigger disadvantages is it uh, eliminates, uh, I guess, trading or at least diminishes it? Um, I think that is a legitimate concern. I think what you lose, um, I think what you lose in the inability to trade things is more than overshadowed by what you gain. Um, and I'm not saying like, yeah, Soulbound's obviously always the right choice, but I am saying. I think the the crafted recipes that we made were only they a they got people you know just playing the game again because hey there was something to do and I couldn't just pay my way to victory right like I have to go farm these demonic essences and I have to craft these items myself and I can't just buy the end result off the auction house like it got people farming demonic essences and it got people crafting their items and it got them showing their buddies look at this awesome thing I made isn't that fucking cool instead of saying hey look what i bought for you know two billion gold on the auction house um so it it, it certainly has value um, but you do lose you lose out on the trading totally like trading comes up all of the time um, anytime we're talking about items or anytime we're talking about like you know even those crafting recipes or anything or like legendary items whatever the case is when soulbound comes up as an idea Immediately, someone's like, but trading, trading is important. And it's like, okay, well, look, here's the thing. Is it important to be able to trade everything always, or is it more important to feel a sense of pride in the things you're wearing? Because if you're allowed to buy everything you're wearing, and that's the best gear in the game, okay, that's cool. Um, but that's also a world where no one really cares about shit on the ground because they bought it off an auction house. Um, or they traded it to the buddy, or whatever the case is. Like the the fantasy of trading and the fun idea of trading is like I found items, I traded with my buddy, or hey, maybe this guy and I bartered out a deal. Um, but the difference between that and what actually ends up happening with like again the auction house or just you know any system where there's a completely fluid economy, um, it, it it fights against the idea that your time is valuable. Yeah. And it fights against the idea that the things you find are valuable. Because they're not going to be. Like, you, you are. Like, the fact that everything is tradable, it, it kind of puts under a spotlight for a lot of people. And this is just general. This isn't player psychology so much as general psychology. Um, the more we make you realize you're not special, the less special you feel, right? Like, everyone will feel like they are smart and they make good decisions in their own right. Um, and, and a lot of people do. But there are more people who are part of the general populace than part of the, you know, the cream of the crop, the exception to the rule. Um, and as soon as everything's tradable, or you know, as soon as your time can be directly valued against someone else's time, you realize your time has little value, um, and and it's a shitty feeling, right? Like the trade-off is: do I want to be able to trade things, or do I want to, you know, actually 
find something that is good for me and I and I'm happy with. So um, I don't know. It's wait, what? Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, was... Oh wow! Someone was just I was I saw a bunch of bad words all in a row, and I was like, "What is this guy talking?" Oh, the cow level. <laughs> the cow level. Funny level. But, uh... I got no info on you. I, I had nothing to do with it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. That's all I got. Yeah, unicorns I... and teddy bears running around, falling over in little pieces is glorious in my mind. <laughs> now you, uh, you seem to say a lot of the things I'm thinking, but much more articulately. No, oh, I, I think. I, I love that. Speak good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I love, uh, I love that idea of, of having ownership, and I t we talk about it a lot on the stream because a lot of people are like, no, we need to trade. But I, I think I totally agree with that. That the, what you lose isn't nearly as much as what you gain. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like I said, it's it's a touchy subject. Um, and it's one that we sort of, and, and believe me, we talk about this stuff constantly, and it's always on our mind, and, you know, we sort of deliberate on it. And um, I can't say for sure where we'll end up down the road. Like, when everything is said and done and the dust settles, I don't know what the game will look like in terms of, like, well, what's more valuable, trading or finding things that you're happy about? Because those two are, are at direct odds, right? Like, you can either... Find things that are awesome for yourself, or you can trade with people. And if you trade with people, someone else has something better than what you have most of the time, and you'll probably never find your own items. Um, so it, it's a bit of tug and, tug and pull, um, and, and we discuss it a lot. But all I can say is we're very aware of it, and I know it's a touchy subject, and some people won't like what I've said on it, but uh, I will defend everything I've said on it if I had to, because <laughs> it's the truth. Like... I, I would love to find awesome items too, but the second I went, you know, and, and paid some money on the auction house, I kind of like shot myself in the foot in terms of ever finding a good item, because I bought items way better than I'm ever going to find, and uh, and it was pretty trivial to do so. so. Um, but I mean, I've gone on record before saying like, yeah, the auction house ultimately I think did way more damage than good, um, but who knew right like in a vacuum yeah. i remember a lot like even before i was working on diablo um we were we'd talk a lot because i was on the strike team for a lot of the initial testing before the game went live um and the auction house was this really big unknown like what's it gonna do to the game like ah uh, no one knows like we can all sort of speculate but we, we don't know right like who knows how this is gonna work out yeah um and that's just a reality of game design like when you create ideas in your head and you're like well it should work out like this but when you put it in the hands of players who knows what's going to happen like players will find ways to do things that you never imagined um, and it seems like uh, the game economy might be one of the hardest things to make predictions about beforehand yeah. oh totally like that's that's uh, yeah players are resourceful <laughs> I'll say that. Players are resourceful. There's also, unfortunately, lots of people who like making bots to farm things in our game. So they don't help matters either. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, they generally like they generally flood the economy, whether it's with items or gold or whatever the case is. If there is a valuable commodity that they are capable of, you know, making real life money on, they're going to have that commodity, and they're going to have it at a rate of probably you know 500 times more than the average player. Um, so it creates, you know, problems when we're trying to sort out, like, well, what's the right rate of acquisition for this thing, and how do we keep that from becoming something that gets degenerately farmed and sold to people? Um, and the, and there and again, that's where things like demonic essence come in. It's like, okay, well, we can make this, and we can make people feel excited about it, and we can make it to where they have to earn it. And the answer to that is soul bind. So, does that mean that's the right answer for every question? No, but it is the right answer to some questions. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, banned uh, bots. We ban lots of bots. <laughs> we do. We, we ban an outrageous number of bots. Um, we just don't always publicize it. Um. But yeah, I mean, before the game came out, I, there wasn't really any complaints that I'd ever seen about the auction house. I think it's just it's one of those things that people never realize it was it was impossible to predict beforehand. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't want to be president. That's way too much work. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a video game nerd. I sit at home and I play video games and I play TCGs and I play board games. Like I'm a giant geek. I don't want to. I don't want to have that much responsibility. Thread itemization idea. Thread. I read lots of them. I don't know which one you're specifically talking about. Regarding. Oh my god! I can't keep up with this scrolling. <laughs> um, ah. It does this thing too, where if I scroll up, it there we go. It locked the window. Let me see. Hold on, I'm reading in Incugus. Uh, oh, I lied. It's not locking in. No. We actually we actually put on slow mode so people can only type one thing every thirty seconds. But we have. No, no, it's all good. There's tons mm -hmm. of people. Like by all means, fire questions mm -hmm. away, folks. I just I can't I can't keep up. With it. I am a slow reader on a good day, so. Uh, let's see, can we expect new affixes that do novel stuff, not only add numbers to already big number? Um, yeah, you, I'd like to think so, but honestly, what, I don't know, uh, we always strive to find new affixes. Part of the problem is um, affixes like the ones you're talking about are the same affixes that other people will say, these things suck, why are they on your items? They make them crap, right? Like. I don't know, health globe pickup radius, like, lots of people don't like it, uh, a handful of people do, but we, you know, we went to very ex explicit steps to make that happen, um, novel things like ignore durability loss, or, I don't know, a plus healing on health globes, right, like, at the core of the game, there, there is what you're doing and what you're getting, there is you're killing monsters, and you're getting loot and XP. Uh, and generally speaking, if we don't give you something that makes you better at one of those things, you're not going to like it. Um, I.e. if it's not more damage to kill things faster, or more magic find or XP bonus to increase the rate of your reward. Um, most people will look at something and say, this is stupid. Um, that said, I think there are room, when I talk about like I, wanted, I want every legendary to be you know, memorable and unique and distinct, I think there's room in there for some that are that are memorable and unique because they're cool or they do neat things. I don't think they all have to be, you know, like the best weapon in the game. Um, and I and I think there's variety of things that just do cool shit. Um, so, but but that's because I think in the spectrum of items, right, and rewards and and uh, legendaries or sets or whatever the case is, I think there's always room for like gag items or joke items, and I think those are totally fine. Um, it just means you don't need every item in the game to be that way, and you only need a handful. Um, but yeah, people love that stuff. I love that stuff. I'm a gamer. Like, I just think about what would I like to find as a player. Um, and and that's those are those are very distinct things, right? Like, I talk all the time when I talk about uh, game design, or people ask me like, "What does it take to be a good designer?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Tell me when I'm one." Um, but I think that there is player shoes and designer shoes, right? And I think the ability to be a good designer is to be able to step out of player shoes, right? Like, take off your gamer nerd hat for a minute, set that aside, and think, like, okay, I know this is what I would want, but what is ultimately the right choice or the right decision? And a lot of times, those things conflict. Um, so when people say, like, oh, we want more neat things, I'm like, yeah, you say that, and I would like it too, but if, like, you know one out of every ten items I pick up then has this neat thing on it, suddenly one out of every ten items I pick up is garbage, and then I get angry, and suddenly I hate this neat thing. It's kind of a trap, so... Um, it's hard to say. Um, if people have brilliant ideas on like what neat things are that they would like to see on items that wouldn't fall into the pitfall that I just mentioned, yeah, I'd love to add it. Like, we always want to add more things that you guys want to see. Um, and it's difficult to come up with ideas that aren't just rehashes of stuff that already exists. So I'm always open to hearing new ideas. I spend a lot of time in my free time and at work um, reading through the idea threads that people make. I just don't post in them all because it gets way too time consuming. Um, I try to touch on all the big topics, or I've tried to touch on all the big topics that I can, um, and then I sort of stop posting for a while because it's just like... I, <laughs> I, I, I love ideas and I love reading them. I also have a lot of work that I have to do, so um, if there's ever something worth mentioning or reading, um, yeah, send it my way or make sure someone finds it in the community and they'll get it to me. 
Um, community spends a lot of time linking me threads that you guys post, and I read through them. and And there's a lot of great ideas out there. I just I don't high five everyone in every thread that I read, even if I secretly high five them for making my life easier by giving me cool ideas. Hmm. Uh, like the uh, even the, the like the uh, the Call of Ancients last forever is a set bonus. Like that idea was something. Uh, I think I read in a post on one of the EU forums. I was like, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. And now that's one that I quoted and people see all the time. Like, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, it is. That dude in Europe came up with it, but we're going to put it in the game because you guys came up with it and we thought it was awesome. That's really cool. Demon Hunter get a real buff. No, Demon Hunters are never getting any attention. Uh, we're, we're talking about deleting them from the game, actually. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm going to get quoted out of context. <laughs> so you're going to see that. Uh, no, uh, Demon Hunters... Demon Hunters... Uh, Alright, so... I, I can't even really... I mean, why it was, it was way more uh, apt to talk about Demon Hunters. Um, they are fun. Uh, in a vacuum, they're great. The problem is less that demon hunters are bad and more that at the end game barbarians are way out of control um, compared to other people um, so the answer I can give on the demon hunter front is one the demon hunters won't like which is you're actually not that bad it's just that other people are way better um, <laughs> and by other people I mean barbarians mostly uh, and CM wizards to a lesser extent um, and really, I don't know. It's it's we don't have a short term fix for you because honestly, like part of the solution is making the barbarians and the CM wizards more in line with everyone else. Um, and generally, I'm a huge fan of buffing as opposed to nerfing things or or changing things. Um, but when we talk about, for example, like class diversity and skill diversity, um, when you look at witch doctors and demon hunters, they actually have a lot of skill diversity compared to say barbarians and wizards. Yeah. Or uh, yeah. Because you have skills that are all really compelling in their own way, and they're all pretty but well balanced. Um, but then the problem is you've got like the barbarian and the witch, uh, the wizard, who have skills that are clearly breaking the game in some way. And generally, it's because you've got proc coefficients on a couple spells that interact with a couple other spells that create this really degenerate play experience, like whirlwind barbs sprinting around, like. You have infinite rage because the proc coefficient on tornadoes is too high, which feeds you too much rage with your other ability, which makes your Wrath of the Berserker last forever when it's supposed to not last forever. Um, so you've got all of these things feeding into this like one or two character archetypes that are, are way outside of the scope of everyone else in the game. Um, and I think that is bad, and I think that does need addressing in those cases because as fun as those characters are to play, and while I don't just enjoy her, uh, while I I don't dislike the play styles they open up. The problem is that they're so efficient they overshadow everything else and they take choice away from you. Like they take choice away from I, I have a barb that I played forever, right? Like and I used to do a bunch of like I used to do revenge and I used to do all these like overpower and all these crazy character builds. Um, and I felt good about them. I liked them and they were effective. Uh, and eventually I started trying out the whirlwind tornado thing, and I'm like, yeah, this is just better than everything else. Uh, and then I didn't have a choice anymore. So, it's it's a give and take. Yes, I know demon hunters are really sad faced because they're not barbarians, and they can't infinitely kill everything at once without dying. Um, I, I play a demon hunter as a main now, and I've said it a couple times, I feel like demon hunter is the most polished class right now. It's it's really rare that I'll play my Demon Hunter twice in a row with the same build because I feel like, yeah, I feel like I can put on almost any skill set and still be viable. I think, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's, I think they are a better class for it. Um, so, yeah, I know it comes up all the time though. People are like, raw, Demon Hunter suck, and it's like, yeah, I know you think that, but... It's not that Demon Hunters suck. Like, I, for example, Witch Doctors. Witch Doctors have amazing skill diversity. I actually have a Witch Doctor. I got him like, I don't know, Paragon 20 or something. But um, I said it when I was playing my Witch Doctor. All the guys at work, I was like, dude, Witch Doctor is way more fun than my Barbarian. Like, their skills are really, really cool. I've got, like, lots of different build options available to me. Um, and I have a lot of fun playing this guy. And I played him, and I got him, like, Paragon 20. And I was like, this is a lot of fun. 
Uh, and then, you know, after I got the Paragon 20, or by the time I got the Paragon you know, 20 or whatever, um, which was before the ex like exponential XP growth, so it actually took me a, about like two weeks, I think, to get the Paragon 20. Um, I was like, yeah, he's a lot of fun. Man, he's a lot not as good as my Barb. I'm going to go back and play my Barb, mostly because I, I, I always two-box everything, or not two-box, but I always like to monitor at home, so I would die lot playing my Witch Doctor because I wasn't paying attention when my bar was just sort of this face roll thing where I didn't even have to look at the screen. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't say my Witch Doctor was bad, I would just say the bar is definitely out of line with the rest of the game and to a lesser extent to get into Wizards sometimes. Yeah, yeah you can pick up health builders while dead. So I'm, I'm going to throw it out there because I'm curious, but throw it right back if it's something you don't want to go into. Is is one of the solutions t being tossed around to diminish the effectiveness of like whirlwind and crit mass, or or to make it more challenging to get the gear where you could play those builds? Um. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can, well. Okay. So mostly any. Okay, I'll say this. Any class that has a ability with a vast, vastly out of line proc coefficient on any of their skills, um, we have a very clear correlation between that and lack of character diversity. Because almost unanimously on every class what happens is people gravitate to using those skills and then they gravitate to things that abuse those skills, or not abuse, but capitalize on the benefit they're gaining. Um, and in almost all those cases, those characters have very, very low skill diversity. Um, characters like the Bar or the Witch Doctor and the, the Demon Hunter, on the other hand, who have pretty balanced um, proc coefficients on their abilities, have a tremendous amount of build diversity because they have a lot of viable builds. Um, so, for the long term, we're absolutely looking at addressing like fixing proc coefficient discrepancy wherever it exists. Um, and, and there's a difference between like, oh, well, this goes like 20 or 30% better than it should be. Okay. Um, there's that, and then there's like you know, tornadoes and, and uh, critical mass where your proc coefficient is probably like 10 times too high. So we're, we're looking more at like the systematic calls and not necessarily like, oh, man, screw barbs. We hate those guys. We're going to nerf them. Um, it's more of, no, there's really just some things that are broken with some of the original game design tuning values. Um, and we need to address them. At the same time, like when we uh, when we did the nerf, I forget what was it, 104? I want to say not 104. No, it's 10. I don't remember. It was after 104. Um, when we made the the one change we made to uh, tornadoes, and we like slightly reduced their coefficient. Um, and and I said it too. Like I'm not offended by the fact that people whirlwind all over the place. I'm offended by the fact that they have to use tornadoes in order to whirlwind all over the place. Um, so. We went and we were like, okay, let's let's take the proc coefficient down on Tornado sum because it's way, way out of line. Um, and even then, I was like, this is probably not remotely as much as it needs to come down, but people are already going to have a like freak out attack over the fact that we're touching it. Um, but let's take it down some. And at the same time, let's also take down the cost of whirlwinding. Like, I don't care if you whirlwind for like five hours at a time. It's cool. It's fun. Have, enjoy it. Um, the thing we don't like is that you, you have no build diversity because you have to take into the fray and you have to take sprint run like the wind to make this happen. So let's try to make those things not as mandatory. And then, you know, maybe you do replace into the fray or run like the wind, which, which most people haven't because honestly, we didn't change them as much as they needed to be changed. Um, but in the long term, I think preserving gameplay styles is cool. I think. Our focus is de-emphasizing how mandatory certain things are to your character's functioning. Um, I, I think CM is cool. I think Archon is cool. I think Run Like the Wind, Tornado. Oh man, you just got murdered by those bees almost. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Remember before I, you I nerfed think, those. Oh god, those <laughs> things are out of control. I hate it. Dude, when the game launched on Inferno, and I was like, like when it first launched, it was insanely hard. Um, and I was playing my Barb. I hated those bees so much. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I would just like, they would they would instigate me. Like, 
they would shoot, and I'd be like, all right, it's safe. And I'd start running at them, and as I'm running at them, they do, like, the line of bees, and I'm, like, yeah. two inches from them, and I'd be like, dead. And I was like, God, F you. <laughs> they, they evade less than they used to as well, right? Mm hmm yeah. They used to be way worse than they are now. They're still <laughs> painful, but... Yeah. Uh, ladder, I already answered ladder. Why do you guys keep answering the same question? No, I'm Good. Yeah, I'm probably most... join the channel later. Um, <laughs> Uh, ladder is something that is not out of the question. Uh, we talk about it. We're investigating it. Um, if you, it, you so, might see it one day. I'm not making any promises on when or how, but it is certainly something that we talk about a lot. And again, I mean, a lot of talk we do to, or, or sometimes do, is like w Diablo needs to live on well beyond the point at which we're working on the game, right? Like D2 had some support, but really, like you're not going to see. And I'm just pulling time frames on my butt, but like five years from now, you're probably not going to see us making huge content patches or class updates, right? Like at some point, we'll set the game aside, sort of leave it as a work that we have completed, and move on to like Diablo 4 or whatever, right? Like, um, and ladders is absolutely one of the things that helps the game stay fresh for people five years from now. Or three years, or two years, or whatever, right? Um, and ladders, ladders are cool. Ladders comes with a lot of baggage when I say ladders, but the idea of sort of like a fresh economy and a fresh system for people who choose so to opt into leveling all over again, with a clean slate, with other people who want the same thing. Um, so that's really, um, it's really important and it's really compelling, and we'll, we probably want to have that one day. Um, but I don't know how we'll implement it, or what it'll look like, or when it'll go in. I totally just confirmed D4. Totally. <laughs> I guarantee you, at some point in the history of Blizzard, there won't be a Diablo 4. It'll probably be 20 years from now. <laughs> it's no time soon. But I, I don't think it's too much of a reach to think that the company that has like three really strong IPs is going to create like more and more of the games in those IPs. <laughs> um. If, if you see people answer questions that were already answered, you, um, they can always watch the highlight afterwards and hear the answers as well. Yeah, it's all good. I'm just trying to trying to skim your... I, I can't remotely keep... I read so slow that I can't even read this. Not to mention, I don't know why, but like I have a really hard time with Twitch's chat stream, especially. Hmm. All right, hold on, dude. Hold on. Clip, pan, clip a pandemic. I can't even read your name. Clim Pandemic. Please answer. I want to go... When can we expect to see grace periods for teleporting on someone who is in combat and being one shot? Also, why nerf attack speed? It was one aspect of Diablo 3. <laughs> All right, um, grace periods. Uh, probably not. If you're porting onto someone and getting one shot, don't be there. Go play in a monster power game that's not one shotting you. Um, on, uh, like I know that's not an answer that's going to be popular, but it's the truth. Like if you're porting to a buddy and dying. Uh, a, talk to the guy and ask him, is it safe? I used to do that all the time. I used to play, my brother was a witch doctor, I was a barb. We were playing Inferno when it was hard. He would port to me and instantly die very often. He used to joke that he had to push spirit walk before he took the teleport because he knew he was going to die because <laughs> I was always standing in something he didn't want to be standing in. Um, and honestly, like, coordinate a little bit. I don't know. It's like, a lot easier now, right? The it multiplayer is. Changes. The game's way less difficult, and you know we do a lot of things like we put marks above the people's banners so you know they're in combat. Like I don't, we don't, we don't need an invulnerability window. Um, I know you might want it, and if you're playing hardcore, you should just be more cautious, anyways, and not do it without talking to your friends. So there's that. Um, attack speed nerf. That one was controversial. Um, I will say, uh, ultimately. I don't think it needed to be done. Um, I think there was concern. Um, actually, I'll take that back. It may have needed to be done to some extent. I don't know. This is the whole player versus designer thing, right? Like, as designers, we're offended generally. And this is, I'm really sweeping statements here, so don't well, don't infer this to everything I say. But um, Designers tend to get offended by things that don't fit within the box that they tried to create um, or the box that they have envisioned. And I think attack speed was attack speed was definitely like way the best stat in the game by a huge margin. Um, when when attack speed was what it shipped as, a blue ring from a vendor was better than a lot of the rare items you found. 
and fundamentally, that's a big problem. Um, now, I, I think it wasn't a problem in the in the context that they're probably always the thing that's better than everything else for any given player, and that's fine. Like, it's fine to have things that are really powerful because you have things that you want to attain, and I think that's valuable. So, um, I think the mistake was. And I think the mistake was mostly changing things people had already acquired. Um, I think they that like we collectively have learned the lesson of okay in Diablo, we'll mostly not ever do that again. Like if we change something, we will change it by virtue of making the old thing that is bad not drop anymore and making a new version of it and dropping that instead. Um, so. The attack speed thing was definitely controversial when it happened, um, and hindsight 2020, I don't know that it needed to happen, but it did, and I, I wasn't even working on Diablo at the time, uh, and I remember giving them my two cents, and at the time I was like, I don't think you need to change it. Like, I know I know it's it's really, really way better than everything in the game, but so? Like, whatever, let it ride. Um, and ultimately they decided to change it, and, and that's cool too. Like. Uh, it, it caused a huge community revolt. Um, it really ticked off a lot of people, but I think they, the lesson was learned, and uh, yeah, I don't know. There you go. That's kind of rambly answer to <laughs> attack speed. I don't know if you got what I was getting at there, which was, yeah, it got nerfed. Nah, it didn't necessarily need to, but it is what it is, and um, the Diablo team learned a valuable lesson as a result of making that decision, and now they don't nerf things anymore out from under players, so you know. Hey, hooray for that. Will runes be back in the game? Um, runes, I like the idea of what runes do. I, uh, I don't like necessarily the old implementation. Um, I think the valuable part of runes is... I think runes and sets have a little bit of an overlap. Not a lot, but like the, at the core, there's the basic idea that Individually, they don't really do anything, but it gives me this really grand goal to aspire to. Um, and in the D2 case, that was like, I really want to get all these X runes and this, you know, six socketed bow, and I want to, or whatever, five socket, I don't remember what it was I used to hunt for, it was a long time ago. Um, and I want to make this really awesome thing, and I don't get it right away, but eventually I'll get it, and bit by bit I can make progress towards that goal. Um, so in that regard, I think runes were cool. Um, I think stuff like the sets, I would rather I would rather like do that via sets, right? Like really cool set bonuses, like have infinite resources, but it's really hard to get the entire set. And I slowly start getting one piece and then another piece, and I work towards this goal. Um, so I think they're cool. They probably won't see a, a reinvention in Diablo three the way they were in Diablo two. Just because they were kind of, I don't know, they are also really, that was a bloated ass system that was really buried and hidden, and you had to like go to all these wikis to even know what the hell they did, and I don't know, there, there were drawbacks to it too, but there were some really cool things there, so hopefully that answers your question. Create a flexible item goal. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, like I said, I mean, I think the core of the idea was completely sound. I don't know that we would re-implement it in the same way that it used to be done. Skill charges on gear. Uh, you probably won't see that, um, mostly because a our game doesn't have like clickable items. B, um, we we have a. I'm gonna say this, and someone somewhere is gonna have a conniption, but we have a more robust skill system, right? Like in D2, you could find your town portal, your ID. I remember like the hotkey. It was really crappy implementation, but. You could bind hotkeys to everything you could possibly do, um, but they were all still tied to left and right click. Um, so, like, you could have an item with charges, and you would mouse over your right click button, and you would hit F7 and bind that ability to F7. Um, we don't have those. I don't think we need those. Um, I think having six hotkey buttons plus your potion is enough buttons to deal with. I don't want you to have to deal with more clickies. Um, so. That idea probably won't ever see light. I don't have a no problem with like something proc to Hydra, but I do have a problem with 
you get an item with 40 charges that you have to repair to replenish and it creates this awkward tension about when do you use them, when do you not, are they good, um, I don't know, there's, there's design space there and maybe, maybe one day we'll explore it but currently I have no intention of going that route. Make farming more fun. Are there areas you enjoy in the game? Um, making farming more fun touches a lot on what I was talking to with Rakan earlier, where um, I think it's more just we need to provide the players with a bigger breadth of content. We need we need more things for you to do other than farm Act 3 over and over and over and over and over and over. And I mean, changes like the density changes were meant to sort of help mix that up. Um, ultimately, there will probably always be the right and most efficient path to run to get XP and loot. Um, and, and really, I don't know that there's any way to combat that, right? Like, there will be somewhere in the game a place that has 10% more XP worth of mobs than somewhere else in the game, and that's just going to happen. Um, and I think that's fine. I think what's more important is we also provide you reasons to farm or, you know, do other content than just the XP. Um, and I think um, things like demonic essences are a good tool to leverage in that case, right? Like, if imagining imagine if you will um, that there was some system where there was something like demonic essence that was you know only attainable from some restricted area like maybe there was super demonic essence that you wanted for some reason and those could only drop off of you know belial and diablo and sedea etc um, and i'm not saying we're doing that i'm just saying like it's not too much of a reach to imagine that we can find reasons for you to care about other things in the game than just, you know, your XP bar and your XP per hour. Um, so, yes, we, we want you to have more things to do. We want you to be able to say, what do I want to farm or what do I want to do tonight and do that. Um, and it's just going to take time to get there. Why didn't the game include all this one really? Um, I don't know. I mean, for starters, uh, there, there's a lot of work in design, and I, by no means do I take credit for any or all of what I say. It's just a lot of my own opinions, and a lot of it is stuff that's been formed uh, from from just working with the, des the designers a lot, or the other designers a lot. Um, a lot of game design is learned by doing, and a lot of the decisions and the things that seem really obvious now were not necessarily obvious two, three years ago when the game was being developed. So I, I have the fortunate you know, point of view of coming into a work on a project that I really love after it was already made and shipped. And it's really easy to look at something and go, oh man, you know how we can fix this thing that's already really good? If we change X, Y, and Z, this thing will be even better. So it's really easy for, for anyone to like look at something that's, that already exists and say how to make it better, right? But like, I don't know, the car industry, right? Like people make better and better and better and better and better cars every year, or at least they claim they're better, they're really just more expensive. But, um, uh, but it's, it's really easy to say like, here's how you make a car better. But it was really hard for the first guy who came up with the idea of a car and made a car, right? Like, obviously, he didn't make the best car ever and had all these problems and people have been... And cars are such a bad example. I don't care. It's just easily understandable for people. Um, so, and I, I always love the car example anyways just because the car example, there's just great quotes from it. Like, the guy who created cars said a long time ago, like, if he had asked people what they wanted, they would have asked for a better horse. So he didn't give them what they asked for. He gave them what they, you know, the right thing to give them. And that's a lot of design, right? Like, when whenever you're like designing a game, people will be like, "Oh, I want this. I want this. I want this." And, and a lot of times, designers will do things that are contrary to what people say they want, with the idea that like, "Yeah, but this is better." Like, and there is some degree of like, just trust me in there, like with any game designer. Uh, and sometimes it's completely warranted, right? Like sometimes, like yeah, I know you say you want something, but really, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna I'm gonna do you even better, right? Like Santa Claus said you want a bike, I know, but I'm gonna buy you a car because when you're 16, it'll be way better than that bike you wanted or whatever the case is. Yeah, like I I just want to comment on that because when I was talking with you guys, uh, you and Wyatt, that is, I realized that a lot of the things that I wanted, I had very specific ideas in mind and 
you guys made me realize what I what I was really looking for. Like, I love when Wyatt asks, "What's the fantasy?" Like, and really tries to get to the core of what people are asking for. And I think a lot of times, yeah, you you realize it's not the actual specific idea that you want. It's it's a result of that idea. And, and a lot of times, it can be done better than and than your version of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's um. Crap, my train of thought just went up the window. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> happens to me all the time. Right, sorry. Um, no, what I was going to say is, yeah, um, a lot of time, like, as a designer, something that I, I've said a lot and people will say all the time is um, any feedback is good, right? Like, even the ranty guys who are really angry about something, like, reading the thread and finding out what they're ranting about has value. Um, because the thing that players are not always good at is identifying the problem they're they're really good at presenting solutions for what they think the problem is um, but a lot of times people don't necessarily understand what's causing the problem they're complaining about or they're they're trying to bring to your attention um, and it doesn't mean that there is not a problem it just means they don't necessarily understand it they don't have a, a high enough level view of it to understand the root cause of the problem um, but anytime someone is upset or, or you know, giving like really angry posts or even just constructive feedback, um, there is almost always an underlying issue that needs to be addressed. And the hard part, and you know, the part that is our job, is to find out what the actual underlying cause is and fix that. So a lot of times, it's kind of like going to the doctor and saying like, oh, I've got a runny nose, I need something for a runny nose. And the doctor's like, yeah, but your runny nose is because you've got a cold or you know the flu so I'm gonna give you flu medication it's not gonna necessarily like make your runny nose go away immediately but it's gonna fix the actual issue so um, there's a lot of that there's there all feedback is always good regardless of you know the framing or the context and there's a there's wait are you excited for that yeah I'm totally excited for the new Star Trek movie can't wait um, <laughs> I I actually used to not really like Star Trek uh, I don't know why I thought it was a little campy I watched it growing up because my mom loved Star Trek, The Next Generation and stuff, and I saw all the old Star Trek movies with, like, Save the Whales. Um, but I thought the new Star Trek movie was really well done. Like, I, I was sold when I saw it. I was like, okay, I could get into this Star Trek universe. Like, they, they, they just do a really good job of it. No. Countbound items equals nonsense. I am sorry you do not like that. <laughs> um, as I stated before, they absolutely accomplish what they were intended to accomplish, and I think that bind on account has value in certain scenarios so i am sorry <laughs> but too bad <laughs> i i have i could ask some more questions if you run out of questions from chat but uh yeah i mean i'm i'll probably head out here in the next like 15 20 minutes so if you i maybe i'll be back later i don't know what time are you streaming till uh the competition goes till four I'm streaming okay. for 36 hours, but we're doing... Oh, good Jesus. Okay. <laughs> doing well, other stuff later. I guess it's your job, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of... I've actually got a lot of meetings today, but uh, I'm going to have to dip out here in a minute so I can eat some lunch and then go to meetings. But I, myself or White may be back later. No promises there. Uh -oh. uh, so if you have, like, 10 or 15 minutes worth of questions that you want me to answer, uh, or if you just want me to sort of ramble about other sort of things, I can do that. Yeah, um... If you have stuff to ramble about, that's probably better. The questions I was going to ask were more like personal, just my own in curiosity yeah, is uh, like Let's hear it. differences between working on World of Warcraft and Diablo. Um, they're very different games. Um, I mean, they're very different games, but you know, it's it's the same company. Like Blizzard is an outstanding place to work. Um, I feel really fortunate that I get to work with lots of really uh, intelligent and highly skilled designers. Warcraft was, they were different in that Warcraft uh, being an MMO and being a game where we had to sort of like sustain a, uh, an ongoing game, I'm sorry, a perpetually ongoing game, right? Like we have to constantly release new content, constantly, you know, provide players with updates for their subscription fees, uh, etc. I would say the biggest difference is, is, A, Warcraft is a bigger team, so um, it was just different. It was different than working with Diablo, which is a smaller team. Um, not in a bad or a good way. It's just, I don't know, less people. Um, 
And the other difference is, I, uh, I, I will say, I can't break Warcraft. Or rather, there was there was more boundaries for what was or was not acceptable in terms of like items or rewards game. Um, the the game has to be sustained, right? Like anything you make, it, it's like power creep in TCGs. Like whatever we make now, we have to at least equal or outdo later. Um, therefore, the boundaries on what is or is not an acceptable item to make is is more defined um, and has less flexibility. Um, and it's funny, actually, when I started working on Diablo and I started working on the Diablo items, um, and I was talking to my brother, who also is a designer and he works here, he works on WoW, um, his, his, uh, his short reply to me when we were talking about like the loot on Diablo and what all needed to be done with it and what we needed to improve, uh, he said, just do everything you ever wanted to do on WoW but couldn't. And I was like, yeah, that's a really, that's a really good idea. Because, like, I, you know, I want to do, like, I, I think there's a lot of value. Like, and, and while, like, the most extreme thing I ever did was, like, I made heirlooms. Because I was like, yeah, you know what sucks? Leveling characters ever and ever. And you know what would be cool? Not having, or, like, making that experience easier. Um, and, and at the time when I was, you know, coming up with, like, how do I make heirlooms? And what are those? And what does that mean to the game? Like, um it was still really confined in like what could even an heirloom be and what is within the context of what what's acceptable to not you know sort of like undermine the reward structure of wow um but then on diablo it's like i don't know what's acceptable to make what can you think of like even i said like what if there's a set that gives you infinite resources like yeah that's crazy but it's also okay right like so what there's a set that gives you infinite resources it's an action rpg right like the game is about feeling overpowered all the time and being just a murder train so yeah there's going to be things that we just those things couldn't exist in wow right like i i could not make an item that insane in wow um and, and for good reason and and diablo it's acceptable within the confines of the game so um there's there's more freedom in that regard like in the regards to how crazy can the ideas be and still be acceptable um, but I, know, I, I love I love the company. I love WoW. I love Diablo. I thoroughly appreciate all the designers I've worked with over the last eight or nine years that I've been here. I forget. It's all kind of blur at this point. But um, different, but not better. It's just different. Um, it's it's tons of fun. And all, at the end of the day, I get paid to make video games. So I mean, I'm happy no matter what because it's a great job and I love it here. And like, this is all my family. So. It's really cool. What what if someone was uh, aspiring to do what you do? What advice would you give? I am so never sure how to answer that question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I mean, I've gotten that question a lot over the years, and uh, it's really hard to answer. Um, I I think the best thing I can say is play lots of video games. Play lots of games, like. It's not even just video games, right? It's game design at, at its heart is the same across any type of game: board game, card game, um, online game, single player game, whatever it is. There's a lot of core elements that are always the same. It's about understanding, like, a what's fun, uh, or, or what what do you enjoy about games, right? Like understanding what makes a game that you do like good, and identifying those things. Understanding what makes a game you don't like bad. Um, trying to figure out like what are things that could be done to improve it. Um, gen it's really hard to teach good design sense, um, but you can, if you have a good grasp for, yeah, treasure goblin, eat that. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I think, I think the best advice I can ever give, and it's the one bit I, I said earlier, um, I think the ability to be a good designer um, is goes hand in hand with the ability to step out of player shoes and enter designer shoes um, and that is to say like you need to be able to, to set aside your emotional response to something and understand what causes that and why it happens um, and also to understand that the way you play a game is not the way everyone plays games um, and that's a big one like I know a lot of people who, who've never been able to like to make that connection right like 
a lot of people assume like I play a game this way, therefore this is how everyone plays a game, and that's that's not the case, right? Like, there's a reason like Peggle and Plants vs Zombies and, and Angry Birds are popular, even if they're not things that we necessarily would enjoy. Um, understanding why they're successful or why they're popular or what makes them fun to people, um, I think that's key to being a good game designer. Um, if you want to be not a designer and you want to work in like art, for example, or programming, like way different answers like go to school get education and training and pro or, or i mean teach yourself programming or you know teach yourself like the basics of art or technical art or whatever it is you want to do um but as it relates to design specifically i think like there's lots of thought experiments you can do like to figure out what makes a game good why it's good why it's not good if it isn't or areas that can be improved upon um, and I think just a good skill to have as a designer is, like I said before, being able to identify the actual root cause of a problem as opposed to just identifying a symptom of the problem. Yeah. It's really good. Well, uh, I already got the playing lots of video games and analyzing them part down. So I'm halfway there, I think. <laughs> Spectacular. I mean, a lot of it, too, is just like dedication of time. Like, when I, um, when I, got, in, when I got hired at Blizzard, like... Part of it is just I had no experience and I had no training or education in, in the field. I just felt like I had a really good grasp of all the things that needed I needed to as, to be a game designer. Um, and I was just like, you know what, I feel like I can do this. And like I know I can do this and I'm willing to prove that I can do this. Uh, and I'm willing to just, you know, start, like, get my foot in the door. And I started eight years ago as a GM, and I think I moved from GM to Quality Assurance uh, to be like a QA tester for, I want to say like a year and a half in total between the GM and the QA, um, hmm. and then eventually got a design position when it opened up. So, I mean, part of it too is just, you know, take the step, like if you really want, if it's something you really want to do, like something you truly, and I said it since I was like... 12, like, I want to be a game designer at Blizzard. That was something I always wanted. Um, and ultimately, getting there, just, or getting here, <laughs> was just a matter of, you know, biting the bullet and saying, all right, I'm packing up everything I own, and I'm driving to California, and I'm going to submit a resume to be a GM, and I'm going to start there. Right? Like, you got to take the first step. Kind of like dating. <laughs> you got to be willing to try, and if you don't try, then, well, it'll never happen. So. Uh, that's really cool. That's, uh, it's inspirational. I think I think I've always wanted to be a game designer, but I've I've sometimes felt like it was out of reach, and uh, yeah, that's very enlightening. I, w I was surprised to hear. I think when I was at Blizzard, people uh, people saying that not all the developers had college degrees in game design. Um, no, not at all. I mean. Um... I actually don't know many. I don't know many people that have a, a degree in game design necessarily. Um, I know a lot of people that have degrees in assorted things. Um, one of the guys I used to work with for a long time, who was a great designer, his name's uh, Chris Earhart. He he was actually a high school math teacher um, before he came to work at Blizzard. Um, but he just you know he had a good sense of of designing games and what makes them fun. And he played lots of games and board games and card games, etc. And he had like really tangible skills. Like he's very good at math and fixing like oh, this is unbalanced because of, you know, the math is wrong and I can fix that. And it's like, great, that's a, that's a good skill to have. Huh. Um, uh, I don't, I think Pardo's, it's funny, I think Pardo had like a, God, what was it, like criminal psychology degree, right? Like something just completely that you don't go like, clearly that's the guy who makes video games. Um, so, I mean, education is good, but education is more just about, uh, that's that's broadly applicable. It's not like you have to have uh, education in some specific area, or even you know necessarily training. Um, but if you don't have any training, you need to be willing to like start at the ground up and work your way up, and and you know sort of build your skill set, and you know prove yourself. Like I said, right? Like part of it is just being. Uh, I know uh, it, a lot of people. I know a lot of people. Just this is a blanket statement into one, and this is completely as it relates to my personal life. Um, I know a lot of people in my life who were never willing to start at the bottom and work their way up. They always wanted, they felt entitled, like, I should be the manager of this company because I'm just that smart. Like, okay, put your money where your mouth is, go work at the company, go prove you're willing to be, that you're capable of being the manager. And if you are, they'll make you the manager eventually, right? Like, uh. you know, pony up, 
double down, put your money where your mouth is, and just do it. I don't know. Like, <laughs> there's a shit in Nike quote. Just do it. <laughs> can't even say that's it. like it's like who you're gonna call or who you're gonna who you call it like this is one of those things you can't say because of branding is so good they just immediately calls to mind nike sorry yeah. tangent off donald trump and you're fired that one seemed a little <laughs> too much <laughs> i oh god i hate that show i hate all reality tv with such a fiery passion <laughs> I've been oh, watching God. Apprentice just because I love Penn Jillette. Oh, jeez. Oh, I love... Wait, Penn's on there? Penn oh, he's he's uh, final two, him and Trace Atkins. Really? Oh, I, I shouldn't say that. Him. I don't want to give it away to people, but sorry. No, no, it's cool. I love, I love Penn and Teller. Yeah. I love... Their, they have that uh, that show that was, was on Showtime. Such a great show. Yeah. Uh, sorry, anyways. I, I, love, <laughs> I love those guys, but yeah. I hate reality TV so much. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually gonna split in about five minutes. So I got time, maybe for one more question. Cool. Maybe, maybe there's something in chat. Um, if I was gonna ask another question, it'd probably be, what what games do you play when you're not playing Diablo? But there might be a more appropriate question uh -oh. in chat. I'll let you decide. One second. Oh my god! And now like 800 questions are scrolling, so I may just answer yours. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Let me see if there's anything in here particularly interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, locational based stuff. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading a question from D3 God asking about like locational based viewing of friends. Says he lives in Northern Virginia, Fairfax. Actually, he used to live in Richmond. That's where I grew up and where yeah, I moved that's from. That's where I was born. Oh, really? Yeah. Richmond, Virginia? Yeah. No way. I didn't live there very long, so I don't remember it, but yeah, that's okay. where I was born. Yeah, I lived there for 25 years, I guess. Huh. So I drove out to California to get a job at Blizzard. Um, we have talked about adding features. Uh, I don't know that this necessarily would solve the problem you have of like, I want to see players in Virginia, but um, we're, we've talked about adding a feature that is mostly applicable to like web cafes, but it's like players near me. It'll show you players playing from the same like IP as you, but that's not going to help you. Uh, it does make it easier to group with like your buddy who's sitting in the next room, but. Um, yeah, there's too many questions. I can't answer them all. I answer yours. Um, <laughs> games I play right now. Um, I love lots of different games. Um, I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone because I have access to that. Lol. Um, <laughs> I have been playing a lot of Netrunner, actually. It's a TCG. Well, kind of a TCG. I guess it's a living card game. Um, but that's a ton of fun. I really like that. Um, what else have I been playing? Obviously Diablo. Um, play that. Uh, I play Smite. Uh, my fiance streams for high res, so I play Smite with her on occasion. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't know. Um, nothing else recently has come out that's captured my attention. Um, mm -hmm. I tried playing Neverwinter for a day or two and kind of was like, meh, I don't know, whatever. Not really into it. Yeah. Um, I play anything. <laughs> Anything good? How about that? Like, this is a good <laughs> game I play. I played Bioshock recently, um, the newest one. I loved that game. I was like, fucking, was ranting about how good it was for a while. Uh, yeah, Doom Princess. That's my fiance. Um, she streams for high res. Oh, cool. Um, Path of the Exile. No, I didn't play Path of the Exile. I looked at it and was just like, mm, pass. Um, and I, I mean, to be fair, I should play it just because it's, you know, it's very similar to us and they have a lot of good ideas. Um, and just like when I was working on WoW, right, like there, I have some degree of responsibility just to play games like ours. Um, but I think enough people here played it and we sort of gleaned anything worth gleaning from it. So, um, thoughts on Cryptozoic MMO TCG? I think it looks amazing. Um, Corey Jones is a friend of mine. Uh, he was a really good friend of mine for a long time um, before he started Cryptozoic, and he had pitched that idea to me like two years ago, and I told him, like, that sounds crazy good. You should make that. So I was really happy when I saw he had a Kickstarter and that they got funded super fast. Um, the game looks amazing. Uh, Cryptozoic's a great studio, and I know a lot of the guys over there. I used to work with them here at Blizzard, so I have nothing but respect and hope of success for them. Uh, Seam Wildstar looks, actually looks pretty cool. I, again, I have a lot of friends over at that studio. A lot of the people at Carbine used to work at Blizzard, so 
Um, I worked at some point in the last eight years with a lot of the, the designers and uh, artists that they have over at their studio. Um, I think the game looks like it'll be really cool. I love their videos. I think they do a good job of like really selling their sense of humor. And uh, I personally appreciate that as a, as a gamer. I like when studios don't take themselves too seriously. I think it helps. Um, so they've got some really cool looking stuff in the game. I've been trying to get a hold of of the uh, Carbine, people at Carbine Studios because I, want, I wanted to stream Wildstar. So I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, I'm hoping they. I, I I wouldn't play it. Like I totally want to get my hands on it. Um, at the same time, like generally speaking, when a game development studio has a game in beta um, or alpha or whatever it is. There's usually a window of time where they don't allow uh, other game developers into their beta until it's mm -hmm. like at a certain stage in development. So Makes I sense. assume I won't. Get, I'll get my hands on it, just not for a little while. So. Uh -oh. um, I'm gonna cut out on that note. I've been That's talking good. so long that my uh, my throat's getting a little tired. So, uh, <laughs> good luck with your competition. Win, um, and I may or may not be back later in the day, depending. So. Alright, cool. Have, have, I popped a beer. Now I popped a sun kiss, <laughs> a diet sun kiss, actually. I'm getting a little parched. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. It was a super pleasure to be here and talk to you all. Uh, and I'm sure I'll talk to you all more in the future and maybe later today, depending on my, uh, my schedule, which is slammed with meetings. But uh, yeah, happy one year anniversary, Diablo. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. That was great. Yeah, thanks for having me, buddy. Take care, guys. See ya. How do I... Uh, how do I... Actually, um, if you just want to, if you just want to stay here, then it might make things easier. I'll, I'll leave this channel. No one else is allowed in this channel that you're in right now. Okay. And then cool. if you guys come back, you'll already be here, and we don't have to worry about figuring it out again. All right, neat. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave it here then, and I'll let White know. Um, and I don't know. I'll spam you somehow if I figure out things. If I get a chance to swing back by later. <laughs> Take care, guys. It was a pleasure. Have lots of fun. Keep watching Archon. He's a cool guy. Uh, peace. <laughs>